everyone and welcome again to Springfield Indian Hockey. I'm Mike Barrick on our Coach's Corner Show with Indians coach Lauren Henning. And coach, the Springfield Indians this past week picking up a couple of more victories. The team winning 10 of the last 12 games and, and have just played extremely well. Well, we've, uh, we've started to put it together. We're working very well defensively as well as offensively and uh, Sandy's playing well in goal. But uh, the last couple of games are probably two of the best games we've played all year. We went into St. Catharines. We knew they were they were in a position to only be a point behind us, and we came out and we played aggressive and took the play to them the whole game in a six, strong 60 minutes. And in Rochester, they've got a, a very good team, and they, they're missing a couple of guys, but uh, defense, they've got most of their forwards, and the guys came out and they, we pressed them. We had 45 shots, and uh, they kept. They were frustrated because the goalie was playing great, but they hung in there and they kept taking it to them. Now, we've been saying the past three or four weeks that this Indians team has been playing very well. Not only is this team playing very well at this point, but the team is up among the top teams of any team in the American Hockey League. What are your thoughts on that? Well, it, it, we've, we've been moving up the ladder, but it's frustrating as, as we're playing well that uh, New Haven is playing well, and it's, uh, you know, you're moving up, but you want to, uh, you know, you think you'd be a little higher, but it's, you have to keep on your toes. You have to keep playing well. Nobody's really doing us any favor to see Baltimore won again today, so we have to win our own games. And uh, it is, uh, you know, if we, with the win tonight, we're only five points behind Rochester. As uh, great a start as Rochester had, it's quite an accomplishment. So the guys got a lot to be proud about. Who has impressed you during this big last 12 games or so with the Indians winning the 10? Anybody in particular, or has it been a total team effort? Well, everybody's played played well. There's not, I uh, can't really name anybody that hasn't played well. I mean, Timmy Trimper's played played outstanding for us. He's got a lot of big goals, and Roger Corco's played outstanding. Alan Kerr, the whole line has played great, but uh, Brian Lyons come down. He's played very well, and just uh, everybody. Uh, and every, anyway, Scotty Housen uh, was out for a long time, and he's that line is playing very well. It, so it's it's been a team effort. The Indians this past week had a couple of player changes, including defenseman Randy Velashek, who, as we talked about last week, uh, very impressive the past few weeks. Well, Randy was playing uh, probably the best hockey he's ever played. He was plus 19 in about uh, tw 11 games, and he struggled to start of the year. He was having a tough time uh, adjusting, coming down, seeing as many defensemen were there, and uh, I guess thinking he would, no matter how he played, he wasn't going to get a shot. And It was nice to see him get a chance because he had been uh, playing outstanding. Also going up, Dirk Graham to the parent Minnesota North Stars. The parent North Stars are making some changes up top. Well, they've made a couple of trades, uh, or a trade yesterday, and I guess they're supposedly talking and making another trade and they have been making some changes they're wheeling guys in and out they've had a couple of injuries but they're not happy Toronto winning the other night puts a little more pressure on them Toronto's not that far behind them so obviously the pressure's on them and they there's a couple more guys that apparently they want to they want to trade so they're giving Brian some time down here and Tommy Hirsch but the younger guys are the in my mind are who they have to commit themselves to and they have to when they come down here, if they're playing, if they're only staying here for a short time, they go back, they got to play. They can't be uh, sitting on a bench, and I think they finally realize that, so they've, they've got to move some bodies. Talking about the youngsters, Mike Sands has just been sensational. We've talked about it uh, the last couple of weeks or so. This past week, again, two victories and playing sensational, but tonight, Lauren Mollican in the Nets. Well, Sands, he's played outstanding. He's, uh, he's been very strong every game. He's only I can only fault him on a couple of goals. That was the Moncton game where he got a little lazy uh, behind the net and overhandled the puck a couple of times, and other than that, he's played a uh, strong game every game he's been in there. And Lorne hasn't had a chance to play that much. We've played a lot of games where we've been played in back-to-back -back games. Then we had uh, the last little while we had a week off or whatever. So Sandy's he's played both games. And tonight, uh, Lorne played up last week. He came up with a big game against New Haven. And now he gets another chance tonight. And he's, he's been playing. He's been looked great in practice. So, uh, you know, he's had a great attitude. And hopefully he can come up with another big one tonight. Tonight, the Binghamton Whalers, first place in the American Hockey League Southern Division, and a team that has whipped the Indians twice this year. 
Well, they they caught us on our low, uh, low both times. They we weren't really together as a team, and uh, we the one time we came in from a long road trip, and you know unfortunately we're coming in tonight from a long road trip or last night, and so they've uh, they've had it their way pretty good. Uh, you know they've been last time they were in here they practiced on our ice and we're traveling, and last night they didn't play, so it's uh, but I know our guys are a little uh, upset the way they they rubbed it into us last time. So hopefully we can come out of the shoot and uh, take it to them tonight. Well, coach, good luck against the Binghamton Whalers this evening. Thanks, Wayne. Lauren Henning, coach of the Springfield Indians. The Indians have won six in a row. Look for number seven tonight against the Binghamton Whalers. Stay tuned for hockey action. It's Lauren Henning. I'm Mike Barrick, and we'll be back in just a moment. When you mail a UNICEF greeting card, it goes to two different people, your Aunt Lucy and to a child in another country who needs help, health care, nutritious food, education. It, it's as if I split the card in two, and each person receives half. UNICEF greeting cards have two destinations. Oh, I know Aunt Lucy well. I'm sure she'll understand. Call 800-228-1666 for the nearest UNICEF outlet. The Springfield Community Network presents the Springfield Indians against the Binghamton Whalers. Good evening, everyone. Mike Barrick, along with John Forsland, here at the Springfield Civic Center, where a red-hot Springfield Indians hockey club that have won six in a row, seven in a row here at the Springfield Civic Center, and ten of their last twelve will face the first-place Binghamton Whalers in perhaps tonight one of the most important early season games for the Springfield Indians. Well, Mike, at this point in the year, it's really difficult to say, is it a big game or is it a big game, you know? There's a lot of games left and a lot of things can happen in the 1984-85 season. But I would have to say at this point, after the start the Springfield Indians got off to, and the way they've been playing of late, on Friday night picking up probably one of the most inspirational victories of the season, an overtime victory over the once first place in Red Hot Rochester Americans. And then to play the next night against the Binghamton Whalers, who, as we mentioned last week in our last telecast, probably one of the best clubs on paper in the American Hockey League. Definitely experienced, definitely has a lot of firepower to throw out there out on the ice. So when you put those variables together, you got a great matchup at this point in the season. We'll be looking at some of the big scorers in the American Hockey League, Lou Francis Getty and Paul Gardner, and some others in the Binghamton Whaler roster. The Whalers, of course, come in as the most explosive team in the American Hockey League, leading the American Hockey League in goals, assists, and points. Not only that, but the Whalers are coming off a very physical game in which two bench clearing girls the game the other night uh, against the Nova Scotia Whalers, so they're going to be primed for tonight's action. Boy, Wednesday night in Nova Scotia, game, uh, rather in Binghamton, a game which saw the Whalers come out on top in that one. The boys got into it right off the start before the first puck was even dropped in pre-game warm-ups. The two clubs got it going and both sides went at it. A bench-clearing uh, breakfast broke out and then Mike in the third period of that hockey game, another bench clear came out. Four players were ejected before the game even started. I tell you, the Binghamton Whalers, if that doesn't feel character, I don't know what does. And as we mentioned, an experienced club, so we're looking at a great game here tonight. Whalers have been playing very well. They've gone 8-1-1 in their last 10 games, and there'll be a handful tonight for the Springfield Indians. But I tell you, the Indians are going to be a handful for Binghamton, led by Tim Trimper. Boy, that guy is on fire. He has a big scoring streak on the line tonight. Nine straight games for Tim Trimper. Really setting the, the place on fire as far as that is concerned. And the other thing that Tim Trimper adds to the Springfield Indians lineup is such leadership that you would not believe. The captain of the Springfield Indians, he's been that way since he came here being assigned to Springfield. He's the one of the few veterans the Indians have, and when it comes to leaders, Tim Tripper is the guy, an inspirational leader, and he's shown them how to do it on the ice with his scoring tactics. He was the game-winning scorer in the game Friday night in Rochester, the 3-2 overtime victory. I tell you, he's been playing very well. The goaltender tonight for the Springfield Indians is a goaltender by the name of Lauren Mulliken, Mike Sands has started the last five games, and Lauren Mulliken will be in the nets tonight. Sands uh, has played 11 of the last 12 Indian games, and he needs a rest tonight. A well-deserved rest for Mike Sands, and of course, we're going to see Lauren Mulliken, who's always risen to the occasion whenever he's been called on. It hasn't been too often this year, but he, of course, was out of action for quite some time, and then played a big road game in New Haven a couple of weeks back and turned in a stellar effort. A little rusty at the start due to the fact that he was, of course, called up to Minnesota, then got himself a little bit injured and then wasn't seeing the ice time. 
but Lauren Mollican, of course, is stay sharp. It's always tough for a goaltender to be out as long as he has to stay sharp in practice. You need to see those game conditions. And tonight, Lauren Mollican will get that opportunity. Both teams have made their appearance on the ice momentarily. We'll have hockey action, the Indians and the Binghamton Whalers. Indians missing a couple of players tonight. Defenseman Randy Velasek and right wing Dirk Graham called up this past week to the parent Minnesota North Stars as defenseman Bob Rouse. We'll tell the fans more about that in just a moment. Well, let's pause for the playing of our national anthem here at the Springfield Civic Center. Great job by Francis Smith, the organist, uh, Dan Marujak playing the national anthem. Francis Smith, another excellent job. Starting lineups tonight for the Springfield Indians against the Binghamton Whalers. The Indians currently in fourth place in the American Hockey League Southern Division. Binghamton in first. The Indians in goal. Lauren Mollican. Mollican on the season has a mark of three and four of 4.55 goals against average. On defense for the Indians. Dave Jensen and Tom Hirsch, the forward line. Roger Kortko, Alan Kerr, and Tim Trimper. For the Binghamton Whalers, in the nets, Peter Sidorkovich, and I'll have trouble with that tonight. On defense, Marty Howe and Graham Nicholson. The forward line, David Jensen, along with Greg Adams and Dean Everson. The referee this evening is Jerry Pateman, the linesman, Bill Dobman, and Joe Calcasola. And we're underway here in Springfield. The Indians looking for their seventh straight victory. And it's cleared immediately into the Springfield zone. Goes into the corner. Whalers take over. They try and center one. Loose in front. And a stop by Mullikin right off the bat as Dean of Essen had a chance right off as the Whalers had a good scoring chance early. Well, Lauren Mullikin, we talked about him being a little bit rusty, not seeing the ice time, is tested right off the bat and comes up with a big save for Springfield. You know, Mike, this is the third meeting of the year between these two clubs, and the Indians haven't fared too well against the Binghamton Whalers. A 10-1 loss on November 2nd, and on October 20th, a 4-1 loss. A game seen here on the Springfield Community Network. And you know, Mike, here on SCN, the Indians are 6-1-1, one one, with only one blemish on that record being when the Binghamton Whalers last played here. So that was way back in October. So let's see if the Indians can avenge that. They've had good luck on SCN. And the only loss, of course, to these same Binghamton Whalers on the Springfield Community Network. We'll try and break that. Uh, streak here this evening and move to 7-1-1. One, one. We played 21 seconds into this first period. No score between the Indians and the Whalers. Face off in the Indian zone. Face off controlled and Dave Jensen has it behind his own goal. Loses control of the puck and the Whalers take over behind the Indians net. They try and center for Greg Adams. He's taken out of the play. Now Adams behind the net tries to center one. It's into the corner and on the side of the net now Dave Jensen steers off the Whalers, Dean of Aston, they all jam up into the corner, and finally the loose puck comes to Cortco, and they all freeze it there along the far boards in the Springfield zone. So very loosely played first period so far early, but we've only played 45 seconds. That's right, a little slow going here at the start. You know, Mike, this is the eighth year of operation for the Binghamton franchise in the American Hockey League. The first three years, they were known as the Binghamton Broom Dusters, coming over from the old Eastern League and then joining the American Hockey League. And now they're in their fifth year being affiliated with the Hartford Whalers and first being affiliated with the Washington Capitals. 
Play underway in the Indians. Brian Lawton, the Indian center iceman, slowly out of his own zone, feeds on the near side for Mark Hamway. He ducks under a check and clears into the Whaler zone. And after it is Ron Handy tries to dump it in front, but the Whalers' Ulf Samuelson clears up on right wing. Now Binghamton clears into the Springfield zone, but Pryor is back there and then gives it for Handy, who feeds up the middle. Here comes Springfield's Brian Lawton across the line, but ahead of the play on the left side, Hamway offside. And Brian Lawton's been extremely hot since joining the Springfield Indians. Lawton has a four-game scoring streak with a pair of goals and three assists. And picking right off uh, from that great season last year that he had coming down here to Springfield. And early on here in his Springfield Indian career has played very well. And uh, if he continues playing like this, I don't think he'll be in an Indians uniform too long. Playing away into the near side. Indians prior shooting. And a save by Sidorkovic. And he holds on. And Sidorkovic, and I'm saying it right so far, that's a tongue twister for uh, an announcer and for both of us. Well, Peter Sidorkovic has been playing outstanding for Binghamton of late, Mike. Of course, Bob Mason, who played in both games earlier this year against the Springfield Indians, is on recall with the Washington Capitals. And as you know, Sidorkovic of late has been outstanding. He's played in 11 straight games. This is 12th straight start, has picked up a mark of 8-2-1 and one during this streak in which the Whalers have played very well, going 8-1-1 one, and one in their last 10 games. And a big part is Sidorkovic. Planned away, the loose puck taken by Springfield's coolest He fans on the puck. And then Binghamton takes over and clears on the near side, Lou Francis Getty. But then the Indians back it up for their own defense. Now Springfield's coolest tips into the Whaler zone. Whalers have to go back. Richie Dunn on the boards. Check. Loose and, and fought for. And then it's clear to center. Here's Gordonine for the Indians. Shoots to the Whaler line. And Binghamton breaks back. Here's Scott Kleinendorf. Dumps into the Springfield zone. Mollicut loses control of the puck. And the Whalers clear to the right side. Holding it in and clearing it behind the net is Kleinendorf. He's checked. Now back behind the goal. Gardner the loose puck. Feeds to Brown shuttle. His weak shot is deflected at the Indians defense and cleared outside the line and into the neutral zone. Now it's fought for on the far boards and then Springfield's Housen controlled. Here's Housen for Deneen into the Whaler zone. But tipped off by Brown shuttle and Kleinendorf's back to get it clear to center and very slow paced first period. That's right, Mike. Of course, the Indians coming off a two-game road trip. Lauren Henning was commenting before the game that he hopes the guys can dig down deep and really come up with an effort here tonight. He thinks that they might be tired a little bit, but, you know, they're up against the odds here against Binghamton, a tough club, so let's see how they rise to the occasion. Now, Yuri Poner for the Indians. Clears on the side, and here's Big Tom Hirsch moving in. Hirsch winds up, shoots, scores! Tom Hirsch, the former United States Olympic player, just sent down by the parent of Minnesota North Stars, and with a rising slap shot, beats Sidorkovic to the Indians lead, one to nothing. Well, we're gonna wanna see this one, that's for sure, the second goal of the year for Tom Hirsch, as you mentioned, Mike, just coming down from the Minnesota North Stars, and this guy can really shoot the puck. Look at this, a blast right between the wickets there of Sidorkovic, and with 17.06 remaining here in the first period, the Indians are on top, one nothing. Now it's loose on the far side and Binghamton controls. They clear on the left side and Dan Bourbonnet moves in. But the whole play offside at the Springfield line. So Tom Hirsch gets the goal. Hirsch for the Springfield Indians. Played six games last year in the Olympics in Sarajevo and played 56 games with the United States national team in their big tour all over the country. And I tell you, he can really shoot that puck and you saw it on that last goal. The Assists on that, Tate and Jensen at 2.53. Now the Indians play it into the Whalers, into the rink. Back to get it, the veteran, Marty Howe. And it's ruled down on an offside or an I icing, I believe. Faceoff will come all the way back into the Springfield zone. So Indians get on the board first, and that's what you need. And that's right. And you talk about player movements. There's been a few the past week for the Springfield Indians. Of course, you just saw Tom Hirsch score the goal. He has come down the Springfield. Dirk Graham and Bob Rouse, along with Randy Velashek, have been called up to Minnesota. And, of course, the Indians still only have one player out on the injured list, and that, of course, is Ken Leiter, and we expect him back in about three to four weeks. Indians, by the way, have scored now 11 of the last 13 games, the first goal of the hockey game, and that's been a big factor in the Indians' success. Now it's cleared into the Wither zone offside, so we'll have another faceoff outside the line with 16-33 left first period. The Indians on a Tom Hurst goal lead 1-0. 
Mike, and there's another player development that has just happened recently, as, as late as last night. The Minnesota North Stars have signed a free agent, John Markle, who played in the Central League with Montana last year, and Markle was playing in West Germany and is due to be expected in the Springfield lineup, and uh, I tell you, he could help out. He's a left winger with some talent. Here's play all the way back into the Whalers' end of the rink, and after it, Kortko, he couldn't get control of the puck, and the Whalers have to take over, and Ulf Samuelson takes over. He loses control of the puck. Kortko moves in. Here's Kortko, right in on goal, shoots, and it's blocked to the defense. Into the corner, Whalers take over, and David A. Jensen takes over for the Binghamton Whalers. The Indians break it up. Here's Kortko, stops to make a play. Setters in front for Tripper, and it rolls off his stick. Now Tripper, right in front, backhand shot. Zdorkovic to save. Now Kortko has it for the Indians. Setters to Tripper, right in, shoots. Save, rebound, and Binghamton controls. Indians hold it in. Here's Tripper for the try. Winds back behind the net as the Indians control. Portco feeds to Smith. Shooting, scores! Burn Smith let it go, and it may have been deflected in front, and the Indians, who have been playing sparkling hockey, jump on top, two to nothing. And I tell you, Tim Tripper deserves some credit for forechecking and keeping that puck in the zone. And Roger Corco, look at this pass, Mike, as he lays it right out to Bernie Smith, uh, stationed on the far point. Smith, who can blast it from the point, wastes no time in setting himself right here, gets excellent leverage on this shot. And let's see if it's deflected on the way through. I, I believe it did hit someone on the way, way through. We're going to have to wait and see right there. Kerr was the man stationed in front for Springfield. From that replay, I don't think it did. I believe the goal goes to Smith. We'll wait for the call. Now it's clear to center, and then Deneen has it for Springfield. Moves into the Whalers' zone, and he fans on his shot, and Brown Shuttle clears to center, and all the way deep into the Indian zone. Here's Miroslav Mali for Mark Hamwell on the near board. Feeds it on left wing, Handy moves in, but Sidorkovic is there to make the save, and then Binghamton takes over in their own zone. Indians leading, two to nothing, and the Whalers speed into the Springfield zone. Here, speeding in is Jim Magoo. He's tied up, and Hamway has it for the Indians. Clears to the Whaler line. Now Handy moves in. One on three, then tries to backhand one in front. Now the Indians, Hamway couldn't control a pass, and Binghamton clear to center. Now the Indians clear to the Whaler line. It's fought for in the center ice area, and then Tim Coolis levels the player Magoo on the far side. And then the Indians take over Miroslav Mali. Along the near boards for Gord Deneen. He takes control of the puck and comes to center. Here's Deneen into the Whaler zone. Stops to make a play. Moves around the defense. Right in on goal. Shoots. Zdorkovic to save. Rebound. And Dale Henry couldn't get his stick on it. Now Coolis moves in. Coolis stops to make a play. Holds on. Right to center one. And the Indians... Housen couldn't get a stick on it, and Binghamton clear to center. Tremendous hockey what, for the Indians. What pressure by the Indians, Mike. Relentless. Not easing up at one point, and I tell you, they really are putting on the pressure, forechecking and bottling up Binghamton. Play on the side. Here's Coolis takes over to Jensen. Shooting! Blocked in front. It hits Coolis, and he's limping now as he goes off on that hard drive by Jensen, but he skates to the bench as he may have been hurt a little bit on that shot by Jensen. It caught a man maybe in the ankle. Now the Indians Hirsch controls clears on left wing lead pass for Henry he couldn't control it and then the Indians Jensen on left wing for Henry Henry speeds it through on the near side Indians Bodak speeds in he moves around Marty Howe but the Whalers are able to clear to center and on the far side now Binghamton shoots one all the way into the Springfield zone Tate hustling back after it. icing is called on the play and the Indians will have a face off a scoring play on that last goal Alan Kerr the rule tipped it in his 17th of the season Burn Smith and Tim Trim for the assist at 419 well it was hard to see Mike on that replay we didn't know that Kerr was the man stationed in front from that angle hard to tell but I thought that somebody might have deflected it on the way through I thought it might have been the Binghamton defenseman but they do give the goal to Kerr that entire line of Corco Tripper and Kerr we say it just about every week but they've been phenomenal Tripper, by the way, with that assist, now has a 10-game scoring streak. Keeps his uh, scoring streak alive here this evening against the Binghamton Whalers. 13-24 left first period, 2-0 Indians as the Whalers break out of their own zone. Here at center, and now Springfield State clears right back in, offside. And I tell you, this is what the Indians have been doing the last couple of weeks, and the fans got to get down to the Springfield Civic Center and watch this team because it's been like this for the last few weeks. Exciting hockey. I tell you, a great bargain to come down here to the Springfield Civic Center and see this action. I tell you, probably the hottest club in the American Hockey League playing some of the best hockey you're ever going to want to see. So 
come on out to the Civic Center and see because the Indians deserve your support. Play at center ice and Samuelson banks it off the boards into the neutral zone. Now Tate clearing in and ahead of the play, Poner on offside. And Yuri Poner hadn't seen some action in a while, had an ankle injury and then set out a few games. He's got the speed and the fans haven't seen him in a while as is Czechoslovakian counterpart Miroslav Mali scored his first professional goal in Rochester. That's right and I talked with uh, Merrick before the game tonight down downstairs and really I put the thumbs up, I gave him the thumbs up for scoring his first pro professional goal and in his, broke his broken English he said yeah pretty good <laughs> and you know uh, it was just uh, great to see him get on the board you know he got his first assist on the road they gave him the puck and to get his first goal as a professional is a great thrill. Now planned away, Whalers clear at the center, and then sure, uh, the player for the Whalers, Richie Dunn, upended. And now six attackers for Binghamton, delayed penalty coming up against the Indians. Back behind his own goal is Mike Hoffman. He winds back for Dan Bourbonnet. Back behind the goal for Hoffman. He clears it up on right wing, and the Whalers control. Here's a lead pass for Bourbonnet, streaks into the Springfield zone. Bourbonnet into the corner, centers one, and that's tipped away. Whalers shoot one, and it's deflected over the glass in the crowd as it was let go by Mike Hoffman, so the Indians are going to be penalized here. Yuri Poner will get the call here. Referee Jerry Pateman making the call with 12.31 remaining in the first period. A tripping call on Poner, and the Whalers, who have a potent power play, will go on the advantage here, and the Indians will, of course, be faced with uh, turning away the firepower of the Binghamton Whalers that they can throw out on the power play. Of course, we haven't forgotten about our Tribe trivia, and uh, whenever we get a chance, our producer Mark Reinhart will have it up on the screen for us. A good question tonight, Mike, and I'm looking forward to that, and... Uh, I know the fans have been enjoying our trivia questions. It keeps them guessing, and that's what we like to do. And it keeps me guessing, too. Well, now, I, of course, spend hours. I yeah, I, I know that. Research. You, you brought up the uh, file case again, didn't you? The that's, old archive. That's right. Well, underway, and the Indians take over, and Gord Deneen banks it to the Whaler line, and Brown Shuttle has it. Whalers, who have 32 power play goals this year, move into the Springfield zone. Here's a play for Lou Franceschetti, winds back behind the net. Binghamton try and center one, but Gord Deneen breaks it up. Now Whalers try and center one. They rule that uh, Deneen, who was upended, no penalty called. Now Franceschetti feeds for Gardner to the left point as the Whalers control. Dunn feeds it through to the right side, and then it's shot on goal by Brownshaddle, and the stop made by Malikin after the veteran Brownshaddle let it go. Well, Malikin's been tested a couple of times here in the early going. 11.57 remaining, and if you're just joining us, the Indians on top, 2-0. That time, Brown to let a slap shot go, and Malikin did a great job of controlling the rebound. And uh, understand our trivia question is ready to go, but let's wait for the next stoppage in play. It looks like we're going to have the, the face-off coming up, and I want the fans to get a good long look at it. That's the only reason why. So let's wait for the next stoppage in play, and we'll hold off for a little bit. Jim Magoo, one of the fastest skaters in the American Hockey League, out to take the face off. Withers Brownshottle has it. Brownshottle feeds for Dunn. Back to Brownshottle, hops over a stick, and the Whalers have to go back and have to go in their own zone. A minute and 14 seconds left in the Poner tripping penalty. 11.40 left in this first period. Indians leading 2 0 as Deneen breaks up a pass and circling in his own zone. Feeds up the middle for Trimper, tipped to the Whaler line, and Dunn has to go back. Now, Binghamton tips to the Indians line, but it's cleared back outside, and the Whalers have to go back. Here's Trimper, shorthanded, trying to clear it through, but the Whalers howl, crosses center and shoots one in. It goes along the near boards, and Springfield touches it, and they rule icing as Howe did not cross the red line before shooting it in. A, one of those cardinal sins, especially on the power play. You don't want to make a silly mistake like that, and he's a veteran. He should know about things like that. That's right. A fundamental no-no for Marty Howe on that. Never want to get an icing call while on the power play. Let's take a look at that trivia question right now. Let's see if it can magically appear on our screen, and there it is. One of the players on the ice tonight had a famous father who was an all-star for Springfield. Can you name him? I don't know if I can. Can well, you? Of course. I researched this. Of yeah. course I can, I can name this. Uh, we'll have to wait and see on that. Clay away on the far boards. The loose puck taken and Binghamton come to center. Across the line comes Jim Magoo. Magoo tries to flip one through and Malikin sticks it aside. Now Coolis couldn't get it out. Whalers hold it in. They dump one for Graham Nicholson behind the goal, but Malikin out of the net. Whalers try and center one. Here on this Whaler power play with 20 seconds to go. Here's Marty Howe shooting deflected and it just goes wide as it was blocked at the Indians defense and I think that Coolis got a piece of it. Now Hirsch breaks into the Whaler zone. Shooting all oh, off the post! What a drive by Hirsch. I'll tell you, he really let it go. And then Binghamton breaks back. Clearing it in across the line is Greg Adams, and that shot goes wide. 
behind the net. Whalers try and center one, but Hirsch breaks it up, or and actually Pryor breaks it up, clears it over the glass into the crowd. I tell you, I wouldn't want to be in goal and face that Tom Hirsch. Oh, boy, can he blast the putt, Mike. That time from about 50 feet, Sadorkovich missing it, fanning on the shot, and it went right off the goalpost. Tommy Hirsch can really rifle it. The Indians have killed off the penalty. 10-22 remaining here in the first period. You look at your SCN sports screen, and there's this there's the score. The Indians on top, 2-0. So, Mike, off to a good start here. Good to see against the Whalers. Now, face off in the circle to the right of Mollikin. 10-22 left first period. 2-0 in favor of the Springfield Indians. Now they are waiting. A couple of players, very aggressive fans, saying drop that puck, Joe Calcazola. There you hear some of the fans giving some trouble to Mr. Calcazola. Play underway. Here's Dunn shooting. Skate save Mollikin. It goes into the corner. Indians have killed off the penalty. His pointer was back on, and it goes into the corner. Lawton and Pryor try and clear it out. Whalers in a pinch in Ray Ferraro. He's tied up as the Indian Lawton holding on to the Whalers player along the near side, Bourbonnet, and will have a face off. Well, Brian Lawton and Dan Bourbonnet getting a little bit tangled up in there. Mike, I tell you, Brian Lawton has played well in four games with the Springfield Indians. You talked to him the other night on radio, an interview, a good attitude for a 19-year-old. Knows that he's got to find his way back to the NHL, has not lost touch with that idea, and uh, he's working his way back up. Here are the Indians, Lawton, who we were just talking about, tries to sidestep a check prior and after it, and then Handy controls. Handy feeds it through at the left side. Quick chance, and that goes wide, and the Whalers take over in their own zone. One, two to nothing, the Indians leading, 9.42 left in this first period as the Indians cleared in offside at the Whaler line. And I wouldn't be surprised, John, on a couple of things. One, the Indians have been playing very physical. I wouldn't be surprised we have a couple of fisticuffs tonight. And two, the Indians, after that 10-1 loss and leading two to nothing, they may not just give up tonight. They're going to continue pouring it on no matter how, what kind of a lead they get tonight. Well, one thing that always goes in the back of an athlete's mind, Mike, whenever you suffer a big setback like that is you remember. And I'm sure the Springfield Indians remember the night of November 2nd here at the Springfield Civic Center when the Whalers put it to them, a 10-1 defeat, and just pour it, kept pouring it on for 60 minutes all night long. The Indians remember that night and are out here to give them a little bit of a message here and let them know that they're a force to be reckoned with in the Southern Division. Here's Gord Deneen shooting one in. Whalers take over and back behind their own net and clearing it up on the board to Scott Kleinendorf. He shoots the center. Jammed up there, and Miroslav Mali takes control and gives Frikoulis back to Mali. Now play on the far board. Frikoulis clears to the Whaler line, and a lot of lo loose play in the neutral zone as it's now cleared into the Springfield end of the ring. Gord Deneen trying to get it out. Whaler's brown shuttle couldn't hold in, and then it's cleared to center. Now... The Indians break back on left wing. Here's Coolis with Henry and Housen. A pass for Henry. He's tied up. It goes into the corner. Now Housen breaks up a pass. Housen centered for Henry. Scores! Dale Henry! After the Indians, Housen stole it from behind the net. And with Henry stationed on the doorstep, puts it all and the Indians lead three to nothing. Well, they certainly are asserting themselves in this game, the Springfield Indians are. That's the sixth goal of the year for Dale Henry. Look at the playmaker, Scotty Housen. Since coming back from his injury, he's been nothing but a plus for the Springfield Indians. Finding the open man in front. There's Henry stationed behind Satala. Gets a little piece of it, just enough to get it behind Sidorkovich. And with 8.48 remaining here in the first period, Indians on top, 3-0. Time of that goal, 11-12, and Henry scoring his sixth. And the Indians have this big three-goal lead. Comes to the Whaler line and Marty Howe takes over. Along the near boards for Adams. Adams is tied up and then Howe picks up the puck at center. He deflects it into the Springfield zone and Mollikin clears it away. The loose puck taken by Trimper and Trimper breaks back for the Indians. He banks it off the boards to center and the Whalers take over. They clear to the Indians line and Jensen has it for the Indians. Tips ahead for Kortko into the Whaler zone but taking over back behind the net is the Whalers defenseman Graham Nicholson shoots one all the way into the Indians under the rink. Curse back to get it, and icing is called. Boy, I tell you, the Indians again pouring it on. Very impressive first period. Pouring it on is a good point, Mike. And one thing the fans should watch is the Springfield Indians won't lay back now. A 3-0 lead, but that time continued to forecheck. 
forced the Whalers into a, an icing call, which might not look like a big port of this big portion of this hockey game, but I tell you, it gives them a face-off back in their own zone, it gives them control of the puck, puck controls the name of the game, and they're bottling up Binghamton, even with a three-goal advantage, you're not going to see the Indians get back on their heels. Indians have the Terry Tate, Bob Bodak, and Yuri Pointer line out. Uh, the Indians did have Dirk Graham, of course, on the right wing on this line. But with Graham called up, Poner gets his chance, and they've thrown him on the right wing side on this line. Planned away, and the Whalers out of their own end of the rink, and clear one on left wing. Breaking in uh, across the line and shooting one is Andre Heaty seeing his first action of the night, but it's deflected wide. Then Springfield State able to clear it, but not out. Whalers clear back behind the net. Heaty in after it centers, and a deflection wide. Now Heaty dumps it in front. And the Indians, Vern Smith is there and backs it off the boards along the near side. And Yuri Poner controls. Here's Poner, ducked from a Whaler check, trying to get it out of there. Whalers take control. They move to the near side, to the left side. Dunn shoots, and that goes wide. Held in at the right side by Samuelson. He winds behind the net. Heedy after it, tries to center one. Whalers dump it in front, but Springfield break it up and lead a rush to center. Poner at center, couldn't control it as Bodak pass just failed to click now Binghamton Jim Magoo into the Springfield zone feeds for Heaty. he winds back behind the net but Molly gives a good check into the corner and Tate has it for the Indians three to nothing the tribe leading and Tate clears one off the boards all the way down the ice actually it was deflected in the neutral zone and the Whalers have to go back at center ice and clearing it into the Springfield zone is the player on the far side Ray Ferraro but Springfield breaks back here's Hamway Center just stops to make a play and backhands one into the Whaler zone. Now Binghamton comes to center and Heaty on left wing for Bourbonnet. Bourbonnet takes over, tries to center one, but deflected away by Molly. Now Hamway the loose puck back behind the net for Lawton. Lawton for the Indians almost loses control of the puck, but then the Indians take over behind their own net. They clear it on the boards and outside the line, and the Whalers have to go back. Well, Mike, the Indians now are getting... The Binghamton Whalers are starting to pick up the play as far as the physical side of the game is concerned. But it's something we're going to have to watch is the Indians are going to have to try and combat that. A lot of loose play now in the neutral zone as the Indians clear one all the way down the ice. Back to get it, Graham Nicholson, and icing is called. Mike, we see one of the top Hartford Whaler draft picks on the ice tonight, number 28, Ray Ferraro, and he just took his last shift out there. Last year with Brandon in the Western Hockey League, take a look at these stats. 108 goals, 84 assists, 192 points, second to the great Mario Lemieux overall in Canada as far as junior scoring, but in the Western League, led the league in scoring, had it set a record for most goals, was the MVP of the league, the Molson Player of the Year in the Western League, set an all-time record for most power play goals with 43, three goal games with three, and tied for most goals in a single game, a record out there in the Western League, seven in one game. You know, size might be a question with Ferrara, only 5'10", 165, but the stats prove he can play. Land away, Howe shoots, and it's deflected, but Malikin to save. And Hirsch has it for Springfield. Up the right side for Henry. Into the Whaler zone for Hausen. For Hirsch, he couldn't control it. And the Whalers have it in their own zone. And Gardner feeds it through for Francis Getty. Francis Getty stops to make a play. Centered for Gardner, and he fans on the shot. Now Nicholson shoots, and Malikin may have gotten a piece of it. And it goes wide. Francis Getty clears one right through the goal crease. Nicholson pinches in. Back behind the net for Francis Getty. Centering one, pass, score! Whaler Siltala centered one, or actually had it centered right to him, and with a beautiful wrist shot, makes it a 3-1 game. Well, Siltala comes in here and gets his sixth goal of the year as he came flying in from the slot area. It's centered out there on the play by the Whalers from behind the net. A rising wrist shot that hit Mollican as he sprawled to make the save and then just deflected on through for the first Binghamton goal of the game with 5.28 remaining. They cut the margin to 3-1 Springfield. Siltala just put on a line with Francis Getty and Gardner and since being put on that line about five games ago has picked up 10 points. So he's played very well on that line. Planned away and the Whalers clear to center and Pryor just dumps it through to the Whaler end of the rink. And Wolf Samuelson back to get it. Indians break it up. Here's Trimper tries to center one. The Whalers break it up. Now the Indians, Vern Smith, Shoots one uh, back behind the net, and the Whalers done has to take over and clear one all the way into the Springfield zone. Burns Smith back to get it, and icing is called. Well, 3-1 our score here, 4.54 remaining. 
in the first period, and the Indians are going to have to try and come right back after one goal from Binghamton. You know, they have the firepower to come from behind, and you're never out of a game, especially when you're the Binghamton Whalers and one of the hottest clubs in the American Hockey League, along with Springfield. As you look at your score right there, 3-1, to one, I tell you, the Indians jumping out by three goals. It's never too much against a club like the Whalers. Sotola his six from Francis Kenny and Garter at 14-32. They make it a 3-1 game. Now Kerr after the loose puck, but the Whalers take over. Can't get it out. Tripper shooting! And a pass saved by Sidorkovich. That's behind the net. Indians Kerr spinning to make a play. Price to center one. Gets for Tripper behind the net. The Kortko rather to Tripper shoot. Sidorkovich to save. Now behind the net, Kortko after it. Kortko centered for Tripper. To the left side for Vern Smith. Backhanding in front. Here's Kortko right in. Shoots. And Sidorkovic to save. And we're going to have, I believe, a delay here as the net, I think, was knocked off its moorings or perhaps a hand pass going from one Indians player to another. And I think that's what it is. Boy, Kortko had all kinds of time in front and wasn't able to get a good shot off. Roger Corco has been playing great for Springfield, just taking over the Indians' leadership in the scoring race. Four goals, 21 assists for 25 points. And that 21 assist mark, Mike, tops on the Indians, lets you know the kind of playmaker Roger Corco is, and he can stick handle around that net. He showed it on that last play. Corco has 20 points in his last 12 games. I tell you, he's been super offensively in the last few weeks for the Springfield Indians. Indians have the corner with Tate and Bodak line out as the... Player Tate has it for Bodak behind the goal. Bodak centered for Poner, and he couldn't control it, and Sidorkovich makes the save. And I tell you, Yuri Poner puts a full effort out every game, but he gets frustrated sometimes when he's not able to find the range. Well, he's having a difficult time adjusting to the physical play here in the American Hockey League. Last year with Land shut in West Germany, had 163 points. Really shows you that he has the offensive spark. But adapting to the physical style of checking is another story. Yuri Poner, it's going to be a slow, long, drawn-out process for him, but he'll come around. Now Klein endorsed, has it on the boards. He's tied up, and Heedy has it at center. The rink-wide pass as the Whalers move in. Here's Paul McDermott seeing his first action. Back behind the net, centers, but nobody there, and Bodak breaks it up and able to clear to center. Now it's shot back to the Indians line. Deneen on the left side, and Bodak picks up the loose puck. Into the Whaler zone. Bodak stops. Price to feed it in front for Porner, but it's deflected away and all the way out to center. And Deneen has to go back and gives for Molly. On the left side for Bodak, back for Molly, ahead for Tate, but he deflects one into the Whaler zone, and the Indians go off in a line change. Terry Tate out there picked up his first penalty in 29 games last Friday night against Rochester Mike, and he was complaining about it. Thought it was a, was a bad call. Here's play underway, and the Indians break back. Here's Hirsch, stops to make a play. Feeds it through on the board for a lot, and ahead of the play, Hamway offside at the line. We were talking about Terry Tate. Says the guy pulled a dive on him in the game in Rochester. Pick up his first two points of the two penalty minutes of the season. Well, that was a big thing. When's Terry Tate going to get his first penalty minutes of the year? After 29 games, he finally gets it. And if they gave a Lady Bing trophy in the American Hockey League, he'd be a leading candidate. Of course, they do not. And fans who do not know the Lady Bing trophy goals for most sportsmanlike player in the National Hockey League, usually the guy with the least penalty minutes. Planned away, and Graham Nicholson loses control as the Indians handy to four check. Now Lawton couldn't control it, and Binghamton break back. The Indians leading 3-1. Three minutes left in this first period as the Whalers try and dump one through, deflect it away. Now Binghamton Tau checks, uh, checked off on the play, and it's cleared into the Whaler end of the ring. On the near boards, Binghamton clears to Ray Ferraro up the middle, and here comes the Whaler player Mike Hoffman. He's tied up, and Hamway breaks back. Hamway tries to feed through, but Binghamton clear it away, but not out, and then do clear it outside the line, and the Indians have to go back. Now, Handy at center tries to tip one of the Whaler line, and Binghamton in their own zone take over and clear one all the way back into the Springfield zone. Now, Mike, we're seeing some sluggish play. Looks like both clubs a little bit tentative. Binghamton, I thought, would try to take the body more and get on the offensive. Looks like they had a chance here. Now it's loose in front and quickly moving in. It's the Whaler, a couple of players right out in front, and I believe that was Hoffman who had a quick chance on goal, but Malikin the save and he held on. Good scoring chance for the Whalers after the Indians got caught in their own zone. Along with Hoffman, Lou Franceschetti, the leading scorer for the Whalers, was the guy who got upended as he came flying through. 12 goals, 21 assists for Franceschetti. 
knows how to put the puck in the net. He's been up and down between Washington and Binghamton this year. High hopes for him as far as the Washington organization is concerned. He's a, you know, he's a goal scorer, but he's got good size. 6'2", 210, can mix it up both physically and as far as around the goal is concerned. Play underway in the Indians clear to center. And back to get it for the Tribe is Vern Smith. He's tied up by Siltala. And then it's cleared on left wing for Housen. Into the Whaler zone. Housen tries to stick handle around the defense, but Binghamton break it up and clear it to center. Here's Siltala moving in. Drop pass for Gardner, but he's tied up. And Pryor has it in his own zone. Pryor dumped off by Gardner. They all jam up in the loose puck taken by Binghamton. They try and center one. Loose behind the net quickly. They move in, but the Indians break it up and in their own zone, Kulis takes over. Kulis with the Indians winger moving right in. Stops to make a play. Centering through. It's the Dorkovic to save on Henry. Now Henry trying to sidestep a check. Gets for Kulis. Kulis moving around. Gets for Henry. Henry back behind the goal. Feeds for House in far corner. The late penalty coming up and I believe against the Indians. Although in the offensive zone, a penalty coming up against the Tribe. Well, Alf Samuelson there went down for Binghamton, and a penalty is being called here on the Indians' Dale Henry for hooking. With a minute 15 remaining in the first period, a bad time for a penalty to be called here on Springfield. Gives the Whalers a power play opportunity for a minute 15 here in the first. Then, of course, if they don't score, it will carry over to the second period. But I tell you, momentum is a big thing. A goal here for Binghamton would give them the momentum back. With the kind of club they have, I mean, I tell you, the Indians by no means are in control of this game. Well, let's see what happens here. The last minute and 15 seconds in this first period. Playing away in Quartco, who's done an excellent job killing penalties for the Indians this year with Trimper. Clears to the line, and then it's back for Trimper. Trimper for the try. Just is able to dump one outside the line and all the way into the Whaler zone where Graham Nicholson, one of the point men, takes over. Clears to center. Now it's jammed up and Howe up the middle, but checked away, and then it's loose as Adams picks the loose puck up. Now Adams into the Springfield zone. Tied up by Deneen. They go into the corner after it. Fortco trying to get it out. Whalers try and dump one in front. Quick scoring chance, and it's deflected wide. Now into the corner. The Indians couldn't get it out. Howe holds it in. Feeds rink wide behind the net, but the Indians' Jensen takes over. He couldn't get it out. Whalers hold it in. They feed it through to the left side for Howe. Shooting! Oh, and he just missed. And then Tripper able to clear one outside the line. And with 22 seconds left in the period, the Whalers have to go back. Now Marty Howe for Binghamton. Up the middle on the right wing, and here come the Whalers. Here's a quick centering pass. Moving right in is Adams, the shot. Mark and the save! Greg Adams had done it out in front, and Malikin was right there to stop the player in front, Dean of Austin, from making it a 3-2 game. Great save by Malikin. Let's take a look at it right here as Adams came in two on one, slides one across. Everson right there on the doorstep. And look at the goal stick of Malikin get in there along with a little help from Mr. Goalpost. And I tell you, the goalpost is oftentimes said it's a cliche, but sometimes the goaltender's best friend. Malikin made the stop, but had a little help there from the red pipe. A lot of empty side there, not to the fault of Mollican. He had been covering the angle well, and Everson had cut through behind the Indians' defense and was right there on the doorstep. But the Indians are fortunate here to have it a 3-1 game with the Indians still on top with 10 seconds left. Big face-off coming up. Gardner for the Whalers and gets the draw. Quickly done a shot. That's blocked to the defense, and Springfield cleared out. That's going to do it as Brown shot at center takes over and just kind of slaps one in. Stopped easily by Mullican and the buzzer sounds signaling the end of the first break. And the Springfield Indians continue to play solid hockey. The Indians have won six in a row and seven straight on home ice and had a very good first period. Off to a great start here, Mike. The Indians with a 3-1 lead on goals by Hirsch, Kerr, and Henry. Binghamton, of course, came back and got themselves a goal on the play by, from Satala. They're not out of the woods yet, though. The Springfield Indians have 40 minutes of hockey left ahead of them. The Binghamton Whalers with a hot club. So let's look forward to two more periods of excitement here on SCN. Right now, the Springfield Indians are top 3-1. to 10-9 to nine shots on goal in favor of the Binghamton Whalers. We'll be back with our between periods activities, including an interview with the legend, Gordy Howe. The score, 3-1 Springfield. We'll be back after this.
This week in hockey, the Springfield Indians take on the Nova Scotia Oilers Friday, December 21st. And Saturday, December 22nd, the Indians face off against the Fredericton Express in an always challenging AHL confrontation. Bring the entire family and join in on the action. Always free on street parking available this Friday and Saturday at the Springfield Civic Center. After one period of play, Springfield Indians play very well again and lead three to one. Great first period for Springfield, getting three goals here. And Mike, they got off to a good start. We've been seeing it. It's a trend. It's a good trend for Springfield. But not, as I mentioned, not out of the woods yet. Binghamton's a tough club, so two more periods left. It's uh, going to be a good game. A lot of time, things to talk about about the American Hockey League, Southern Division, Northern Division, all kinds of things happening. And you'll see on your screen here the standings have kind of changed a lot since we were last with you a week ago. Let's take a look at the American Hockey League Northern Division. Now, on top, once again, Fredericton, they've been there pretty much all season long. But we were talking last week about how Adirondack had been slipping. Now, all of a sudden, they pick up a couple of victories. They're in second place ahead of the Maine Mariners. I'll tell you, Mike, every week this division is like they have all the clubs in a hat, and you throw them up in the air, and when they, wherever they lay, they lay, and that's where the standings are. Adirondack, is, uh, less than three weeks ago, we found them in the cellar, and now they're up in the second place. Mariners are on a skid, have not been playing well of late but they're only in third place. Nova Scotia is showing signs of coming out. Moncton still having some difficulty in that division, but we've mentioned before, it's a battle for the top four spots in the Northern Division. Taking a look at the American Hockey League Southern Division, of course, that's very uh, much of interest uh, for the fans watching this hockey game. The Indians tied with Baltimore in the Southern Division, a rare afternoon game today. Baltimore moved ahead of the Indians with 32 points, but an Indians victory will keep them, as you see it on your screen, tied for third place in the American Hockey League Southern Division. The Binghamton Whalers in first place with 37 points. But John, and of course we want to touch on it, very important development in the American Hockey League Southern Division. The Hershey Bears in the basement with a mark of 0-9-1 in the last 10 games relieved their coach this past week, Gary Innes. And you rarely see a coach uh, let go in the American Hockey League with Gary Innes given the boot. That's right. There isn't as much pressure as there is on a coach in the National Hockey League, the American Hockey League level, because sometimes the player talent or call-ups or injuries plays a big part of how the club does. Hershey's been having a problem. Ennis is in his third year with Hershey and has had too much success with them. And the management and the fans there, they're rampant fans down there in Hershey, want to see a winning club, a great tradition. General Manager Frank Mathers, longtime coach, takes over as the uh, head interim coach there in Hershey. So at the club with the situation as far as coaching, it's up in the air. Baltimore Skipjacks, by the way, there you see with the Indians have also been as hot as the Springfield Indians. In their last six games, they are actually last seven games, now have a mark of six victories and a tie, and they've been playing very well. So Baltimore and the Indians and New Haven also have won four in a row. So that Southern Division, everybody's playing very well in the Rochester Americans slipping a bit, but very strong division. Taking a look at the top fours in the American Hockey League and a newcomer up on top, Ray Cote of Nova Scotia. That is also like the American Hockey League Northern Division. It jumps uh, up and you can almost throw uh, your hat again, uh, something in the hat on that. That's right, Cote has been playing great for the uh, Oilers. 20 goals shows it with 17 assists. Lloyd Zell is strong, right around deck as always. Wes Jarvis, player of the week last week in the American Hockey League to St. Catharines. And it's, it's interesting to see St. Catharines, one of the weak sisters in the league. Two uh, out of the top six shown on your screen there as far as scoring is concerned. So they have some punch, but having some problems. Goaltending, of course, a big problem in their case this year. Taking a look at the Indians' top scores, and there's Roger Corco on top. Only a four goals, the lowest total on that, but 21 assists. And I'll tell you, his play has led him to be the Indians' scoring leader at this point, but that can change as well. Well, he had some tough times earlier, and we talked about it. And Roger was a little bit tentative around the goal, trying a little bit too hard. Now everything's flowing for Roger, having a great year to go along with his line mates, Alan Kerr and Tim Tripper in the top three right there. Kerr with a goal tonight for 17 points. Tripper with a 10-game scoring streak now with his points tonight. Bobby Bodak and Terry Tate, two pleasant surprises, still remain in the race. Taking a look at the upcoming schedule for the Springfield Indians, just a pair of games on tap this upcoming week. My buddy and yours, Archie Henderson, will be in with the Nova Scotia Oilers on Friday night. Uh, he uh, is a good friend of mine, by the way. And on Saturday evening, the Fredericton Express come to town. They are the leading team in the Northern Division and the top defensive club in the AHL. Oh, it's going to be interesting to see the Fredericton Express. You know, you take a look at the standings every morning. You see the Express on top in the Northern Division. But 
when you're playing in the maritime provinces and you, you follow a club down in Massachusetts, it's kind of difficult to follow a club up there in the maritime. Fredericton is loaded with Quebec and Vancouver farmhands, a good club. That'll be our next telecast here in SCN, a good one. Gordy Howe will be John's guest in just a moment to score. The Indians leading 3-1. to one. We'll be right back after this. Part of Continental Cablevision Bingo each and every weeknight at 7, right here on Channel 12A. Where is everybody? I don't think there's anybody back there. Center, I'm John Forslund, and it's my privilege to introduce to the Springfield fans one of the legends in the National Hockey League, Gordy Howland. Gordy, thanks for coming on. It's our pleasure to talk with you. And let's talk, first of all, a little bit about your duties now with the Hartford Whaler Club. Special assistant to the chairman. Seems like a broad title, but why don't you fill the fans in a little bit what Gordy Howe is doing? Well, basically, uh, we've we got quite a few things going. I'm directly responsible to uh, Howard Baldwin, the managing general partner. And uh, Howard's very good. He, uh, he realizes that whatever I do is good for hockey, so I'll go ahead and do it so I get some time off. But uh, I had the dubious distinction of being down in West for four days. <laughs> and, uh, that's rough duty. <laughs> and, uh, but they, they had their uh, annual meetings down there. And we went down. I sit in with Howard and uh, Miss Francis was there too. And then uh, Bill and Howard and I. And we, uh, I'm in the learning process. Everybody can learn from the game. And then the practical experience of being down there for so many years helps a little bit. Uh, we have 22 inner city functions going in uh, around Hartford to uh, bring the awareness to the community that uh, we need their help and we'll try to give them ours and that's basically how it's going. So we have an old timers group that we play about six games with the uh, mm, revenues gained will go to their particular uh, area for their ice hockey and uh, it was a thought that like a lot of buildings throughout the old six say in the NHL they there's a lot of the old players bring that nostalgia back into the rink, and that's what we're trying to do in Hartford. Let's talk a little bit about the Howe family. Of course, everyone knows the publicity about yourself and the two boys, Mark and Marty, but I know you're quite proud of the entire family as a unit. You've made Connecticut your home in Glastonbury right. and very happy in this area. You've got to be proud of your family. Absolutely. Uh, everybody hears about Marty, who's out here tonight, and then Mark, who's in Philadelphia, and uh, very few know that we have a daughter, Kathy, <laughs> who is a 24-year-old lovely young lady who is working up in the oil gas exploration up in northern Michigan. And then our uh, youngest son, Murray, we're very extremely proud. We've got a great news about him. Uh, he's going to medical school, and uh, he's in his third year, and he, uh, he took probably the most important test of his life if he's interested in that field of uh, diagnostical um, uh, what do you call, I can't even say it, but it's, it's, I guess it's a uh, radiology, radiology dynamical, whatever that is, and uh, he goes in involved in that, and um, unlike his dad, he probably <laughs> set a new standard for the University of Michigan, it's the highest marking they've ever had on that diagnostic test, so we're, we're exceptionally proud, and he said, He's the shortest one in the family, but his head was scraping the ceiling when he was walking out after hearing that. Let's talk a little bit about hockey now, Gordy. You've scored 36 years as a player, and you've seen the original six and the type of player as uh, playing with them. And, of course, if you're getting out of hockey for a little bit, coming back as a player, and now viewing the game today, how have hockey players changed? It's the same game out there, but if you notice any change, maybe there isn't any change. No, there's very little you can do to a hockey game because you've got two arms, two legs, and a head on your shoulders. and uh, the one that uses the head on the shoulders most, like Wayne Gretzky, you get to be a champion. And uh, But basically what they've done with the game of hockey, they've opened it up because before at the red line, which is the center race, uh, you have to receive the puck before you hit that, regardless of where you were at the time it's to be onside. Now as long as you're, the puck precedes you, you can go all 200 feet. And so it has opened up the game dramatically. And has added goals to it, which was a primary function. They want to make the game more exciting. 
But I think the equipment and the youth and the way of training now, where we used to have maybe two or three good shooters per club, now they got 20. Yeah. So you can't key on any one person. Everybody can fire that thing. So it's, uh, I, I think the, uh, the youth and the hockey players today are like every other sport. They're much better. And uh, it's hard to swallow the pill because you also used to think that our league was the best. But really, when you come right down to uh, think of some of these youngsters out here on the ice tonight, I would say five or six of the kids could step in and help any club in the league, uh, you know, like Pittsburgh or Hartford or some of the lesser clubs, Detroit, and uh, even young Gordy Denine, who I knew since he was a little ball-headed kid, he, uh, he's out there and he's probably one of the smarter men on the ice, and, and he's had some uh, time in the big time. So I say what the people here in Springfield and throughout the American League are, are being treated to the exceptional fine game of hockey right now. You talk about great moments. I've heard you speak in the past, and it's kind of hard for yourself to try to put a point on a great moment, but you talk about the fact of skating with your two boys in Houston when you stepped on the ice with them. Some of the fans m might not know what it feels like. Of course, they don't experience it, but how did it feel for Gordy Howe to get on the ice with his two sons? Had to be a, just an outstanding moment in your life. Yeah, it's an emotional feeling, too. You don't know how to uh, properly describe it. Uh, I guess if I was a very young boy looking up at this big candy up on the shelf and it fell off the shelf into my hands that's what happened to me I had retired and gotten out of the game uh, because I that incentive was uh, lacking because the boys had several years ago and the fact that they wouldn't be drafted on one club would eliminate the playing together and I definitely would not play against them so uh, in this case WJ came along and uh, they drafted Marty Mark on one team my name got thrown in the hat and I joined the boys so I came out of retirement is the only reason I came out was to play with them it was only supposed to last a year I had such a great time it went on for seven three years and a lot of those fine nights I spent right here in this stadium that's right and let's talk a little bit about those days with the heart with the uh New England Whalers, and then later on the Hartford Whalers, and of course it's like a second career for yourself coming to Hartford. This area has meant a lot to you, and you played in Springfield at both the Eastern States Coliseum in the WHA, and then coming to this building for a while when the roof problem in Hartford. A second career for yourself has got to be a great opportunity for a player. Not too many get that chance. No, not too many, and really it, it just goes to show someone if you never give up on something, you never lost. And. Uh, I guess it's a great lesson for the young people too and uh, at my age of 43 years of age to get a second chance to achieve a dream, uh, I got it and I, uh, I made the best of it. It was not easy. I, uh, some people said it made it look easy but it was not. I, I suffered a lot of aches and pains through that first month but once I got over the hump, boy, everything fell in line and I really probably enjoyed myself more in those first few years in Houston than I did any time in my life in a game of hockey. Well, I tell you, I saw you on the USA Network on the Fantasy Week up in Lake Placid, and the way Gordy Howe was skating out there looked like, you know, the Poetry moves are still slow there. motion. Oh, I tell you, the, the moves are still there, and Gordy, thanks for coming uh, on. It's been a pleasure you, meeting you and speaking with you, and just a pleasure. Yeah, and Merry Christmas to all your listeners. Thank you. Thank you very much. Gordy Howe has been our guest, hockey legend, and it's been great talking with him. We'll have second period action coming up from the Springfield Civic Center right here on the Springfield Community Network right after these brief messages. This week in hockey, the Springfield Indians take on the Nova Scotia Oilers Friday, December 21st. And Saturday, December 22nd, the Indians face off against the Fredericton Express in an always challenging AHL confrontation. Bring the entire family and join in on the action. Always free on street parking available this Friday and Saturday at the Springfield Civic Center. Welcome back, everyone. Mike Barrick with John Forslund, Springfield Civic Center. After one, the Indians lead three to one. Indian goals, Hirsch, Henry, and Kerr, while Siltala scored for the Binghamton Withers. They've changed an assist on that goal. The Binghamton goal, Nicholson now getting an assist. Gardner had it on the original play, and it's clear. Now it's loose on the near side. The Indians take control, and... The Whalers score right off as the Indians here in this 3-1 game. Binghamton came right in and put it home, and it's now 
Well, we say the Springfield Indians were not out of the woods, and this is the case as the Whalers come right out of the dressing room flying. Mike Satala gets the goal here as he fires one home. 19.43 remaining here in the second period, and the score now reads Springfield 3, Binghamton 2. Time of that, pen, uh, time of that goal, 17 seconds into the second period, and it's now a 3-2 hockey game. Now the Whalers clear into the Springfield zone, and the Tribe go back after it for Smith. So the Whalers come back to make it a 3-2 game right off on the power play, and then it's cleared all the way into the Binghamton zone, handy and after it to take the loose puck. Hamway couldn't center it out, and now Hamway shoots, and a glove saves Sidorkovich, and he clears back for his own defense. Now the loose puck taken, and the Whalers clear all the way to the Indians line and prior the loose puck the Vern Smith Smith shoots one all the way into the Whalers end of the rink and Sidorkovich leaves it there for his own defense now how loses Lawton moves in backhander Sidorkovich is a rebound and it's cleared in front now Binghamton clear to center lead pass on the near side Everson moving in tries to feed it in front for Magoo he couldn't control it now it's held to the right side quick chance kick save by Mollikin on the shot from Scott Klein endorsed. Now it's loose on the near side, and the Indians clear all the way into the Binghamton zone. Well, for Mike Sidola there, his goal, Satala. That line's been hot. Francis Getty and Gardner get the assist. That's been a fiery line for Binghamton. Now it's loose behind the net. Whalers take over. Hoffman centers right through the goal crease, and nobody there. Now Magoo a chance, but it's deflected. Now in front, Whalers Hoffman couldn't deflect at home. Brown shuttle shoots. And a pass save Mullican, and then the Indians are able to clear all the way back into the Whaler zone. 18.06 left in the second period. It's 3 2 in favor of the Springfield Indians. So Tallis, his seventh from Francis Getty and Gardner, the last scoring play, and then the Indians, Jensen, going back after it. That was a power play goal at 17 seconds, and the momentum's really swung to Binghamton. That's right. We talked about momentum, Mike, in the first period, and how an important part it was. And we mentioned that when the Indians got that penalty late in the first period that, you know, when a penalty carries over to the second period, sometimes it's difficult for a club to get started when they have to power play right off the bat. But the Binghamton Whalers, that didn't affect them one bit. They took advantage of it. They had the man advantage, and Satala broke right in all alone for his second goal of the game, and they're right back in it with 17.53 remaining. Now the loose puck taken, and it's clear to center. Back in his own zone for the... Indians is Jensen. He's tied up. It's fought for. Whalers try and center one. Brown shuttle shooting and a pad save Malikin. And the Indians take over. Henry for Coolis. Up the middle for Henry to Coolis, but it's tied up and blocked at the Whaler defense. And then Hoffman shoots it right back in. The Whalers trailing by a goal with the Indians leading, but doing the bulk of the controlling. Now it's loose. Indians try and clear it out. Whalers hold it in. Goes behind the net for the first, has it for the try. He loses control and then able to dump it on the boards on right wing. Here's Henry. Up the center ice area, backhands it in, and the Whalers take over. The Indians in a little bit of a shell right now, Mike. They've got to get themselves out of it. Binghamton Whalers have one of the top clubs in the league. We've talked about it. You know, the Indians got off to a big three-goal advantage, but the Whalers find themselves back in the game. The Indians got to get some of that momentum back. Here's Hirsch for the Tribe. Winds it back. Whalers try and center one. Here's a quick centering pass and it's cleared over the glass and into the crowd on the shot from Francis Getty. Well, a little bit of a breakdown that time in the Springfield zone. Both Molly and Hirsch having a problem and a good chance there for Francis Getty as the puck deflected into the crowd. You know, we keep tabs of what the parent clubs are doing and uh, the New York Islanders and the Minnesota North Stars are both in action as this game is played on Saturday night. The North Stars and Islanders having their problems. The Islanders playing Philadelphia trying to get themselves out of the slump They've been lacking some intensity of late, and the, I tell you, the New York Islanders and Al Arbor have some reason to be worried. Minnesota, of course, made a big trade this week, picking up Bo Berglund and Tony McKegney from Quebec, sending them Brad Maxwell along with one more player Brent, in that deal. Brent Ashton was the other player That's for the it. North Stars that went, and a four-player deal between Quebec and Minnesota, which they could have some more uh, the North Stars. Now with the loose play in front here in this 3-2 game with the Indians leading, but Binghamton on the attack. So 
Sakala back behind the net for Gardner. Centered for Francis Getty. And his shot goes wide. And in the near side, Whalers having control of the puck. Siltala beats for Nichols, or for Samuelson. Deflected. And a Pante Malikin rebound. Score! Binghamton has tied it up at three. And I believe Lou Francis Getty is going to get credited for it. Maybe Siltala as they grab the puck. And it might be Siltala getting the hat trick, but I'm not sure. Well, the Indians having their problems, and it is Siltala, Mike, I believe, right in front. The puck was deflected right here. The save by Malik, and the rebound comes right out. Siltala's right there with the backhander to knock it home. Third goal of the game, the hat trick for him. And the Whalers have come back. It's 3-3, 16-07 remaining here in the second period. John, do you think the Indians are a bit tired? It seems that the three games and three nights are affecting them a little bit. Well, if they're going to tire, you know, now's the time where you would. Having a lead going into the second period, it's a, it's a time where you just might tire just a little bit. And I tell you, that might could be a good point, but they're going to have to dig down and reach for a little bit extra. It's a big game for Springfield here tonight as you take a look at both benches on your screen. As I believe Lauren Henning has called a timeout, he has seen enough as far as he is concerned, trying to get the troops reorganized as you got a good look at Captain Tim Trimper right there and, of course, Roger Corko. It's up to them now to try to get out there. They're the big line for Springfield. Maybe they can get some firepower going here on Binghamton net and try to swing it back the other way because right now the Whalers are in control of this game. They're still trying to sort out also while we're waiting the official score on that. 3-3 three uh, three -three between the Indians and the Whalers. 16.07 left here in the second period. So that's the story, and we'll see if the Indians can bounce back uh, after giving up these last three goals. Here's Hirsch moving right in. Hirsch, but it's cleared in offside. Now we have some pushing and shoving. Alan Kerr has a hold of a Binghamton player, but it's rolled down. The scoring play on that goal, Sotola his eighth from Francis Getty and Samuelson at 353. Francis Getty has assisted on all three goals here for the Whalers. Play away in Jensen for the Indians. Moving in. Jensen tries to dump it in front for Trimper. He's tied up. Now Trimper on the board, dumping it through. Indians, Cortco, the loose puck. Here's Cortco, winds back behind the net, but the Whalers take over in their own zone. Graham Nicholson, he's tied up. Now Indians, score! After a quick centering pass, Tim Trimper, Alan Kerr, and Roger Cortco throwing it around, and the Tribe regain the lead of 4-3. to three. Well, we talk about the line that the burden had to go on, and it's the top line for Springfield. Cortco, Tripper, and Kerr. And nonetheless, the captain is the guy who gets the goal, Timmy Tripper, as he stuffs one home on Sidorkovich, as you see it on your screen right there, for Tripper, his 14th goal of the year, and the Indians have maybe swung the momentum back their way as they now go on top 4-3. to three. So Tremper, who already added to his scoring streak earlier tonight, picks up a goal, and the Indians have regained the lead. Back behind the goal is Braunschattel for Binghamton. He clears the center, and all the way back into the Springfield zone, and Mullikin sets it up for his own defense. Now Bodak for Springfield. He's tied up. Loose behind the net. Ferrero the loose puck, but the Indian Vern Smith covers up and gets for Bodak. Here's Bodak for the Tribe, winding one into the Whaler zone. Sidorkovich leaves it for Brownshottle, who takes over for Binghamton. Here is Jack Brownshottle, the former member of the St. Louis Blues in the NHL. Loses control of the puck and Tate in after it, and we have a face-off. So the Indians didn't back down after giving up three straight goals. Sometimes that'll deflate a team, but the Indians come right back. Show a lot of char character with that move, Mike. 15.04 remaining here in the second period. Some promotions coming up at the Springfield Civic Center. On December 28th will be Fryhopper's Puck Night here at the Civic Center. The first 1,000 children 16 years of age or younger will receive a free Indians puck courtesy of Fryhopper's. It'll also be Youth Hockey Night here. The area youth hockey teams are selling some tickets, and the team who sells the most will receive a player appearance at one of their practices, a great incentive for the youth clubs. Looking forward to that night, December 28th here at the Center. Now it goes behind the net. Lawton for the Indians, trying to dump one in front. He jams up with a Whaler player in the corner. They still fight for it. Hamway tries to keep after it. Tried to dump one in front, but the Whalers are able to clear the zone into center ice. Indians back after it, and Miroslav Mali backhands the center, but Binghamton breaks back. They clear one into the Springfield zone. Mali jams up with the Whaler player on the boards. Now Binghamton trying to center one, but Mali jams up with the Whaler player. Now Francis Getty and Deneen also fight for it, and we'll have a face-off. Good view of Gordonine and Lou, and Lou Franceschetti as they jam along the boards there, and 
few more promotions to go along with the 28th, Mike, as the 1985, the new year is broke, and January 4th, Scout Night here when the Indians play the Hershey Bears. January 11th will be Elks Night. And, of course, on January 18th, the world-famous San Diego Chicken flies into town. And I tell you, Mike, as far as promotions are concerned, the Springfield Indians staying in touch with the community of the greater Springfield areas and providing the most for the fans. And also a reminder, groups of 15 or more receive a discount for the Springfield Indians. Contact Lisa Campbell or Chris Dennis at the Springfield Indians office, 736-4546. Playing away, here's Nicholson at the right point, shooting! Stick save Mollican, and Hirsch has it for Springfield. He clears on the boards. Whalers able to pinch in. They feed it through for Adams. Adams trying to dump one in front. Into the corner, Adams jams up with an Indians player, and it's Deflected on the near side for Everson. Everson jams up behind the net, trying to dump one through, and Henry has it for the Indians. Dale Henry clears to center and is bumped up on the far side, and Binghamton clear to the center ice area. Now the Indians, Halson for the Tribe. He's tied up as the Whalers clear it back to the Springfield line where Hirsch takes over. He dumps it through. Now the Indians, Coolis with Henry. The pass to Henry into the corner after it's centered for Coolis. He's tied up. And the Whalers are able to clear it outside the line. Indians and the Whalers here. Dead lo or the Indians leading 4-3 as Henry tips in to the Whaler line. And now Pryor winds up. His shot goes wide, but Coolis takes over for Pryor. But it goes all the way down the ice, and the Indians will have to go back. Mike, we see a few former Olympians in tonight's game for the Springfield Indians. Tom Hirsch and Dave Jensen. And another De Jensen, David A. Jensen for the Binghamton Whalers, number 17 hasn't seen much action, number one draft pick for Hartford this year, having his troubles trying to get himself untracked in Binghamton now the Whalers move in here's a quick chance for Hoffman he's tied up, and then it's clear to center, and the Whalers have to go back now it's shot back into the Indians end of the rink, and prior the loose puck he's tied up, Ferrero at the side of the net for Hoffman, he moves in right in front Scores! Hoffman as he worked in and beat Mollikin on the short side. And with 12.48 left second, Brian Hoffman has tied it up at four. Well, when you're on defense, you can't let a player walk in like this right here. Mike Hoffman takes the puck right here, is left all alone, untouched, as you see the play in front as Bourbonnet was tied up by Vern Smith. Hoffman left all alone, knocks it home. And for Mike Hoffman, his sixth goal of the year. And once again, with 12.48 remaining, it's a tie hockey game. So we'll have a face-off now in the 4-4 game. We've had four goals in the second period. And now the loose puck taken by Tate. Tate winds off the boards, but Binghamton takes over. And Dan Bourbonnet drops back behind his own net. We're going to have a wide open, one of those old-fashioned shootouts, the way it's looking tonight. And back behind the goal, it's got Kleinendorf. Here's Kleinendorf for Binghamton. Shoots it off the boards to center, and the Indians take over. Now Binghamton moves in. Ferrero. Price the center one, but that's blocked at the defense. Now it's kicked to the left point. Brown shuttle, a drive, and that's blocked at the defense. And Springfield breaks back. Bodak with Tate and Henry. The play for Bodak, he's tied up. Now Molly, a shot wide. Here's Tate at the side of the net. Pulled down, and we're going to have a penalty against the Whalers as the Indians moved into the Binghamton zone. So with 12.03 left second period, Binghamton's going to be penalized. Big power play for the Indians. Sure is, Mike. 12.03 remaining in the second period. Jerry Pateman has a holding infraction called here on Ray Ferraro, I believe, as Tate was trying to break out of the zone. Ferraro was holding him, or really all over him, hauled him down, and the Indians will go on the power play as you take a look at that big draft pick we talked about earlier. Fourth pick for the Hartford Whalers last year. Highly touted out of junior. Great player. A lot of potential for Ray Ferraro. Reminder of our trivia question tonight. Tribe trivia is, there's a player on the ice tonight with a famous father that was once an all-star for the Springfield Indians. Can you name him? And we'll give you that answer in the third period and test your hockey knowledge once again here on the Springfield Community Network. As you take a look at the graphic there, the Indians 18 for 120 on the power play, a 15 percentage, starting to make some climb in that department. Indians also 1 for 12 against Binghamton this year, haven't had much success on the power play against the Whalers, and then it's cleared over the glass and into the crowd. Of course, that one for 12, Mike, was early on the year. The Indians played the Whalers in the initial part of their schedule early on in October, and then, of course, in er the first week of November. And the Indians were having, it was a little bit of a different club than we're seeing right now. So let's see if that stat takes a little bit of a turn for the better. Indians have Lawton with Hamway and Handy as the face-off in the circle to the right of Sidorkovich. 
Now the loose puck taken, Hirsch moving in. A drive! Sudorkovic, a glove save, and he holds on, and Hirsch is blasting again. That's his third big shot of the night. Tom Hirsch loves to shoot the puck and has no bones about it. He let another shot go there. Sudorkovic made the glove stop. You took a look at some of the crowd here tonight, Mike, on a Saturday night here at the Springfield Day, and not a bad crowd during the holiday season here. We're going to be approaching probably the 3,800, 4,000 level here at the Springfield Civic Center. The Indians have been averaging just over 3,000. 3,336 has been the average here at the center. So a pretty good crowd here on a Saturday night to see the big game between the Whalers and the Indians. Now it's cleared back behind the net. Indians now are on the side of uh, the near boards. Lawton takes over on this power play. Now Hamway the loose puck. Hamway feeds for Lawton. Lawton tied up. Tries to feed Hamway and Hamway controlled. Here's Hamway. Feeds to Hirsch at the left point. Hirsch checked on the play and the Whalers are able to clear it into the Indians under the ring. Now Hirsch for Springfield. Tied up. Trying to get by a couple of Whalers and feeds Hamway. For hand to, for Lawton on left wing for Handy. He couldn't see the pass coming and has to go back. Here's Handy for Lawton. Lawton tied up. Then Handy is checked at the line and then Binghamton clear to center. Indians and the Whalers deadlocked at four. 11.05 left as Binghamton steals. Moves right in and Malik in the save on Gardner. Now Francis Getty tries to center and the Indians Handy breaks back. Feeds to center and Housen with Hamway. The pass through but deflected away and Binghamton clear down the ice and the Indians have to go back on this power play chance. Indians having trouble organizing. Now Vern Smith feeds for Trimper but Everson steals his dumper in front but blocked off by Mullican and Springfield breaks back. Here's Housen for the Tribe. In across the line but then checked at the line by Dunn and he has to go back. Now Housen moving in, having trouble penetrating. Holds on to that puck and then has to go back as Binghamton clear the zone. Fans on the Indians a little bit on this power play as Housen loses control of the puck and the Indians have to drop it back. 12 seconds left in the Whaler penalty as Vern Smith moves in across the line. Whalers try and clear it out and it's fought for along the near boards. Hoffman shoots back and the Whalers have killed it off. Well, the Indians squander a power play, Mike, and they have to consider themselves lucky if it wasn't for a great stop by Mollick in there on Gardner. Binghamton could have picked up a shorthanded goal. Now Deneen moving in to the Whaler zone. Stops to make a play. Centering one. Tripper couldn't get his stick on it. Now it's loose. Kerr shoots. Oh! Alex Kerr again gives the Indians the lead with a goal from right in front of Sidorkovic into the bottom left hand corner. Alan Kerr's second goal tonight is 18th of the year and once again the Springfield Indians get the lead as this line continues to work hard. Here's Gord Deneen centering it out. It was blocked by Sidorkovic initially and then Kerr picks up the rebound right there on the doorstep in close corners. Tough to get a shot off when you're in that close. Alan Kerr does, though, and the Indians take the lead. 5-4, 9.45 remaining in period number two. And Kerr, who's the leading goal scorer of the Springfield Indians, picks up number 17, and a big one for the Indians here this evening. That's actually his 18th of the season and second of the night. Now it's back behind the Whalers' goal as Binghamton clearing one to center. And the Indians, Hirsch takes over. Here's Hirsch for the Indians. Up the middle for, Har uh, for Henry. He's tied up. And the loose puck goes for Jensen. Jensen. Back for Tate. To Hirsch who comes to center. He's long. Boomer. High and wide. I'll tell you. Another good shot. Now cool as centers. Tate couldn't get his stick on it. And Binghamton breaks back. Here come the Whalers. Across the line. Brown shot will stop. His wrist shot right on. Malik in the save. And he makes the save. 10-15, the time of the goal. Kerr is 18th and second of the night. Ward Deneen, the assist, and that makes the Indians a 5-4 lead. And we've had five goals in this period, four in the second. Nine big ones tonight on the scoreboard. Well, Mike, we're halfway through this hockey game, and I tell you, if the second half of this game is anything like what we've seen over the first the last portion of this period and of course the first period as this crowd looks on at the Civic Center it's been a great night we talked about what we could expect at the top of the program and they haven't let us down both the Binghamton Whalers and Springfield Indians putting on a show here tonight Withers have the Paul Gardner line out with Sotolo and Francis Getty Sotolo's already scored the hat trick tonight and he's been a big plus in this 5-4 game for the Whalers as prior for the Tribe dumps one all the way into the Binghamton zone and Graham Nicholson back to get it. He loses. Now Kerr moves in, shoots, and he just missed. Now Housen and after to the right side for Pryor. 
Pryor is able to pinch in, but then Binghamton's Gardner has it and bleeds up the middle. Now here come the Whalers. Francis Getty moving right in. Stop centering one. Siltolo couldn't get his stick on it. Now Gardner upended by Bodak. Nicholson couldn't get his stick on it. And then the Indians Housen. Up the middle for Smith. Into the Whaler zone. Vern Smith tries to shovel one through, but Binghamton breaks it up. Now Gardner has a break. He tries to center one, but Pryor back checking clears it away. Sotola to the left point. Quick chance in front. Malik in the save on the shot from Marty Howe at the left point. And with traffic in front, made the save. And all kinds of action here at the Civic Center. A lot of acrobatics in front of the Springfield goal. Lauren Mollican did a great job to come up with that puck as Gardner was flying on top of him. Somehow, Mollican kept his eye on the puck right there and gloved the shot from Howe. And I tell you, as you take a look at Lauren Mollican, Mike, he's had some... Has, can't be followed on too many of the goals here tonight. There have been a couple of breakdowns in the Springfield end, which has hurt him. When he's been called on to make the stop like that shorthanded bid by Gardner, and that one right there, he's been the man. Now the Indians clear one to center. Whalers' Richie Dunn shoots it right back to the Indians' line, and the Indians' Hirsch has it for the Tribe. Here's Hirsch up the middle, and here comes the Indians' Lawton into the zone for Handy. Moves in, shooting. Oh, and he missed by about five or six feet as he went for the far side. Now Binghamton breaks back into the Springfield zone. Hoffman. Drop pass in front. Herrero drops to the left side. Done shooting, and the net's knocked off its moorings in the Springfield zone. And I tell you, the action's fast and furious on both ends of the rink here, and uh, it's got to be tough for the net miners. That's right. It really is an up-and-down sort of style of play, a wide-open style of play. Both clubs showing that they have the offensive punch that's needed, really showing their skills off right here tonight, a showcase, if you will, I tell you, looking out there on the point there for Binghamton, Ulf Samuelson, a big fourth-round pick for the Hartford Whalers, had a great training camp with the Whalers, stuck a little bit for the early part of the year, now finds himself down here with Binghamton. A Swede was Swedish Player of the Year last year playing with the national team. He's a big plus for Hartford. They got an eye on him. And his father has flown in for the game this evening and is seeing his son play for one of the first times ever in the professional ranks. He's here in Springfield for this evening's game. Play away in Mali for the Indians, having trouble getting it out and is able to clear one all the way into the Binghamton zone. And the man we just talked about, Samuelson, takes over and clears all the way back down into the Springfield zone. The Indians will have to organize. Now, Pryor trying to clear it out. Whalers hold it in. Quick chance and Malik in the save as it was quickly shot from a sharp angle. And he had to be keen to stop that play. I believe it was Ferrero who let it go. Now the Whalers, Samuelson for Binghamton. Clears the center. We're going to have a delayed penalty coming up against the Indians as Binghamton moves in. Here's Bourbonnet right, right in on goal. Molly breaks it up and the way they're still controlled. Delayed penalty coming up against the Indians and finally it's jammed up and fro uh, frozen along the boards and Jerry Paintman whistling down an Indians player here with 6.55 left second for it by four Indians. Tim Tripper is going to get the call for interference right here as at the Binghamton blue line, Ray Ferraro circling the zone. Tripper had him lined up, laid him out in the opinion of Jerry Pateman. Interference is the call. 6.55 remaining, as you mentioned, Mike. Once again, the Binghamton Whalers get a chance to get themselves back in the game here, only trailing by one goal. When you give this kind of club at too many chances on the power play, it's, it's really difficult for the Indians to try and fend it off. Tim Trimper for interference, 13.05, and the Whalers have the power play in this 5-4 game here with the Indians on top. Let's see how the Indians penalty killers can do right here. From the faceoff, Hirsch for the Indians, trying to get it out of there on left wing for Kortko. They fight for it along the near boards, and then Hirsch has it for Springfield and breaks back and holds on to that puck and then just rifles one all the way down the ice, and the Whalers have to go back. Now the Whalers clear into the Springfield zone. The loose puck taken of the left side by Dunn, but he couldn't control it. And then the Indians are able to clear it down into the Whalers end of the ring. 6.22 left in the second period. 5-4 Indians. Minute and 20 seconds left in Trimper's interference penalty. As Hirsch, who's all over the ice tonight for the Tribe, banks one down the ice again, and the Whalers have to go back. Now they clear one to the line, and then back to take over is Brownshottle. Here is Jack Brownshottle in his own zone. Clears up the middle, and Binghamton 
breaks free. Across the line, Magoo. Magoo feeds it through. They set it for Siltala, but he couldn't control it. Now the Indians clear one on the boards, and Lawton breaks the center. Oh, Lawton for the Indians. Stops to make a play. Moving right in. Spinning. Shoots one right through the goal crease. Now it's fed to the left side. Coolis couldn't control it. And Binghamton cleared his center on this power play. Here's a chance for Magoo, but it's blocked at the defense. Into the corner. Adams tries to center one. Loose to Magoo. Magoo with all kinds of traffic in front. To the left side, Nicholson is shot. And Malik in the save. And then the Indians are able to clear down the ice. And the Whalers have to go back. Just 20 seconds left in Tripper's penalty. As Binghamton clearing it in, but a two-line offside is called. And a pass. And now Lawton gets his stick up for the Binghamton player. And... Those two are separated on the far side. So Indians doing an excellent job killing off this penalty. They sure are. And with Tim Tripper in the box, Mike, he is one of the Indians' best penalty killers. Lauren Henning has to compensate for that by throwing out Tim Coolis and Roger Corco. Both of them have done yeoman work, penalty killing all year. But I tell you, Brian Lawton going out there, a player who has not been thought of as far as a penalty killer, really an offensive uh, potential type of player is what he's been thought of, shows you know, Lauren Henning, and I'm sure the report will get back to Lou Nanny that he can do the job when he's called upon to kill penalties. Well, you know, they say that Lawton, part of the problem is that he's concentrated too much on defense up in the NHL, that he needs to perk up his scoring a little bit. His defense has never been a problem. It's the offense, and most of the time, as you know, the offensive players sometimes have trouble with their defense, but in his case, he's struggling putting the puck in the net. Here it's played to center and cleared in by Samuelson on the far boards. Whalers take over. Siltala drops it through. Marty Howe has it. With uh, Tripper back on, the Indians have killed it off, but the Whalers, Siltala has it at the left side for the player dumping it in front. Nicholson, but that's blocked by Hirsch, and Hirsch feeds for Tripper. Here's Tripper for the try. Here's for Henry. Henry breaks in, stops, shooting, and the stop made by... The goaltender, Sidorkovic, and he holds on. And Tim Trimper out of the penalty box flying. Well, Mike, getting back to Brian Lawton just a little bit here. You know, it's an interesting situation with him. But I think one of the big problems with Brian Lawton is that too much pressure is put on him too early. In other sports, take, for instance, baseball, a player who's drafted high gets that seasoning period in the minor leagues for a few years. In the National Hockey League, a lot of times they expect too much of a player when he's too young. And Brian Lawton, he's 18 years old last year, this year 19. Maybe he needs a couple of years to get himself on track. He has the potential. It shows here in the American Hockey League. I think he's going to be a good player someday. No doubt about that. He, uh, of course, skipped high school or actually skipped college and went right on to the pros. And sometimes that's difficult to do. Here's Bodak moving in. His shot is blocked for the defense. Goes into the corner. And then the goaltender, Sidorkovic, uh, takes over and we've seen Chris Pryor out on the defense as he's getting ready to go out for the Springfield Indians his wife Joan is expecting a youngster coming up the Pryor's first child on the way well it's going to be a great Christmas present for the Pryors there's no doubt about it Joan and Chris I don't know Chris is getting a little bit edgy it's any day now and uh, for him and Joan Pryor their first child and it's it's just great and I tell you as you look at some of the crowd here it's going to be a joyous Christmas in the Pryor household with a new young Chris whether it be a boy or girl, uh, I'm sure he, the person, whoever it may be, is going to be on skates pretty darn quick. I wouldn't be surprised. Play into the corner. The Indians take over. Kerr dumps it in front, but the Indians' trimper couldn't control it, and Binghamton breaks back. Here's Mike Hoffman. Feeds it through. Getting it through is for Ferraro. Right on goal. Mollican sticks it aside. And then Pryor able to clear it, but not out. Then Springfield takes over. Kerr clears outside the line, and the Whalers have to go back and Clear one back into the Indian zone. After it is Kerr. Kerr is tied up, and then Pryor jams up with the corner. Whalers take over at the left side. Quickly done, a shot. Malik and save, rebound, score! I think it was Dan Bourbonne on the rebound. And with 3.40 left in the second period, the Whalers strike and tie it up again, this time to the tune of 5-5. Five -five. Well, you can't blame Lauren Malikin on this one. He didn't get much help in front here from Miroslav Mali as Bourbonnet had a couple of chances right here. There's Mali with an opportunity to take Bourbonnet out. Does not. Bourbonnet knocks it home, and for him, his fourth goal of the year. And I tell you, those are the kind of plays that Mali's going to have to learn to adapt to here in the American Hockey League. He's got to take the body and clear the front. Malikin did his job making the first stop, and then a tough break there as Bourbonnet knocks one home with 3.40 remaining in period number two. It's a tie game. Back to get it for the Whalers is Brownshidle. 
in this 5-5 game, winds it on the boards, and Adams takes over. Here's Adams, slowly out of his own zone, feeds the center, and Kleinendorf winds it back. Indians Hirsch, behind his own goal, winds it free for Handy. He couldn't get it out. Whalers, Kleinendorf centers one, and it goes into the corner. Binghamton trying to center one. Loose behind the net. Indians Hirsch tries to clear out. Whalers hold it in into the corner. Lawton all over the player Magoo on the far side, but they uh, aren't able to control it. And finally, Vern Smith takes over. 5-5 the score. 2.58 left in this second period as the Indians Lawton couldn't control it. Binghamton on a two-on-one. Here's Magoo right in. Shoots. Oh, and he shot it high and wide. Handy has it for the Indians and breaks back for Springfield. Here's Handy out of his own zone. Three-on-two rush. Drops it for Hamway. Cutting in centers in front. Deflection. And Sadorkovic to save. He's got a piece of it. Now Jensen has it. Shooting deflected over the glass into the crowd. But a penalty coming up against the Whalers. Tripping call coming up right here, Mike, as the Indians come right back and put the pressure on. Another tie game. And this game is like a seesaw going back and forth. And for the Binghamton Whalers here, Scott Kleinendorf will be getting the call here for tripping with just 2.33 remaining. So the Indians will have the power play advantage here for the better part of this second period. And this game has swung back and forth, Mike, all night long. And it's like you mentioned before, an old-fashioned shootout. Offensive wide open game. It's going to go right down to the wire here at the Civic Center. This reminds me of a game last year. If the fans remember the Indians and the Hershey Bears, a 9-8 game that was decided in the last three minutes of the game when Steve Blight scored a goal for the Springfield Indians and this reminds me a lot of that game from a year ago uh, it could go either way tonight it might go down to the last shot of the game Whalers as play is underway dump one over the glass and into the crowd so big chance for the Indians on the power play here with 229 left that's right Mike and they got the line to do it right here Roger Corco Alan Kerr Tim Tripper has been the, the line tonight and now Brian Lawton was out there on the point he's being replaced by Tom Hirsch with that big blast from the right point along with David Jensen. Powerful power play for Springfield. He's already let four go. Let's see if he, let's go another shot that big Tom Hirsch. Here's playing away. Loose and the Indians Hirsch has it. Winds back behind the net. Quartco, Quartco trying to center one. Kerr the loose puck behind the net. Here's Alan Kerr for the Indians. Jammed up as they fight for it along the near boards. They jam up and the loose puck goes for Quartco. Centered for Tripper and he shoots wide. Now back behind the net, or up to the point area is Hirsch. Hirsch tries to center for Tripper. Tripper couldn't control it, and the Whalers are able to dump one all the way down the ice, and the Indians have to go back. Another minute and 20 left in the Kleinendorf's tripping penalty as Jensen shoots it in. Minute 48 left in the period, 5-5 the score, and it's clear to center. Now the Whalers take over. They clear one off the skate of the player Gardner, who drops it back for his own defense, and then Nicholson. Shoots one all the way into the Springfield zone and Hirsch back to get it. Now Tom Hirsch for Jensen. Speeds into the Whalers zone. Tries to get around the player Samuelson. Goes into the corner. Kerr the loose puck. He and Samuelson fight for it. Whalers try and get it out of there and then Dunn has it behind his own net and then Works out for the Whalers with 36 seconds to go <laughs> in the period. It's fought for, and the Indians take over Lawton on the middle at center ice, and here comes Hirsch into the Whalers zone with less than a minute to go. Holds on to that puck. Hirsch is tied up, and then Binghamton couldn't get it out. Hirsch holds it in with 20 seconds left in the penalty. They all fight for it along the boards, and Vern Smith gives it free for Lawton. He shoots into the corner, but then the Whalers Samuelson takes over on left wing and Binghamton breaks back the center and on left wing they clear to the Indians line but the Indians Vern Smith back checking takes over and clears for Handy Handy drops back for Pryor he comes to center and just scoops one in the player Klein endorses back off uh, back onto the ice Binghamton has clear, uh, killed it off now it's clear but not out Pryor holds it in a drive and it stops at the Binghamton goal now behind the net Lawton has it tries to cut in front now Lawton for the Indians to uh, prior right point. Back to Lawton with 10 seconds to go. Lawton shoots. Rebound in front. Matt scramble. Center score. Lawton after he had a couple of chances. And then Wolf Samuelson breaks his stick as he was uh, in disgust on that. But Lawton, after getting a couple of pokes, gives the Indians the lead at 6-5. to five. 
Well, there it is on replay. Ronnie Handy gets the goal, his 10th of the year, on a beautiful pass from Mark Hamway. And I tell you, Mike, Brian Lawton did the bulk of that work, keeping the puck in the zone. And as you saw, the tail end of the play here in SCM with just four seconds remaining in the second period, a big boost for the Springfield Indians. They take the lead 6-5. to five. Now it's loose and cleared all the way in. A goal with just four seconds to go. A big goal. The score after two, the Indians six and the Whalers five. And I'll tell you, the, perhaps one of the biggest goals again for the Indians here as they get the last goal uh, with just four seconds to go. A couple of big goals. Always the first goal of the game. And if you can score late before the clubs go to the dressing room, late in the period, it's always a big plus. And the Springfield Indians have been doing that. And once again, do it tonight. They scored first in this game, took a big lead. Then the Whalers, as we mentioned, with plenty of talent and a lot of experience, fought their way back in the game. The Indians, though, not getting themselves down and really coming back from adversity. They've done it tonight, 6-5 after two. An enjoyable game here on SCN. We'll be back with our between periods activities. The score, 6-5 Indians. You're listening to uh, this is Springfield Indians Hockey. Part of Continental Cablevision Bingo each and every weeknight at 7, right here on Channel 12A. Where is everybody? I don't think there's anybody back there. Well, Mike Barrick along with John Forslund and the Indians in a wide open shootout lead 6 to 5. All kinds of things happening and uh, every time you look down on the ice, uh, something's happening as far as the goal is concerned. Well, if you enjoy plenty of offense and a lot of excitement, this is the game to watch tonight. Both the Springfield Indians and the Binghamton Whalers are providing the fans with that. It seesawed back and forth after the Indians might really look like they had control of the game. The Whalers fought back. Looked like the Indians had come out flat in the second period. Lauren Henning, what a big strategic move, called a timeout, got the troops together. Wouldn't you know, Tim Tripper scores right after that. And from that point on, the clubs have traded goals. The big goal by Handy, just four seconds remaining in the second period. And the Indians have a one-goal lead after two. Well, we're going to take a look at all of the goals here for you through the first two periods. And there have been uh, a lot on the scoreboard, uh, 11. So let's just start to take a look at it right away. Indians, Tom Hirsch, open the scoring for the Indians. He's been blasting the puck, Mike, all night long. And here's another look at it right between the wickets there. Peter Sidorkovich. And at 2.53 of the first period, it got the Indians on, on track, got them going. And he's been just a recently acquired this week by Springfield. And I tell you, he's been a force defensively also. He's been in control when he's been on the ice. As you can see tonight, both in the offensive zone and in the defensive zone. Indians were flying in that first parade and took a 2-0 lead as Alan Kerr, as you'll see. That's right, Alan Kerr right here with a goal that I thought initially might have been deflected by a Binghamton player. This is Vern Smith at the top of your screen as he lets a shot go from the point. It's Kerr stationed in front right here. He gets the stick on it and deflects it Pat Sidorkovich for Kerr, his 17th first of the night for him. At 4-19, the Indians had a two-goal lead. And Dale Henry comes right back and gives the Indians a 3 nothing lead. At that point, the Indians were fine. Oh, boy. It looked like nothing was going to stop this club tonight. It looked like they were going to turn the tables on the Whalers and skate to their own 10-1 victory, like the Whalers did early in the year. Here's Scotty Housen setting up Dale Henry. Beautiful play by Scotty. Since coming back from an injury, he's been an added plus to the Springfield Indians. Henry gets the goal, his sixth. And as you mentioned, Mike, the Indians on top by three. Mike Siltala, or Siltala as they call him in Binghamton, was able to score the first of his three goals. He's had a hat trick already this season and scored the first of his three at the end of the period to make it 3 1. Well, the Whalers have one big line just like the Indians do, and that's Francis Getty, Gardner, and Siltala. Here's Siltala with the goals. He goes top shelf over a sprawled out Lauren Mullican for him, his sixth. And that was all the scoring in the first period. It went to the dressing room 3 to 1, Springfield. And the Whalers uh, came out flying in the second period. You always don't like to see a goal scored in the first minute or the last, but in this second period, both teams exchange goals. Binghamton in the first minute of play in the second, the Indians in the last minute of play. I guess I'd rather have it in the last than the first. If Binghamton scores first, and there you see it. Well, here's the goal right here. We have a little bit of a technical problem here. This is not the goal. This is the third goal by Siltola, the one he scored in the backhander. The one previous to this was the breakaway. 
right off the faceoff that Sotolo went in on to score at 17 seconds of the second period. And Sotolo with a hat trick had gotten the Whalers back in the game, and they were playing some outstanding hockey. And Tim Trepper continued, he had already continued his scoring streak, but scored a, a goal tonight, his first goal of the night, as we'll see coming up. Beautiful play here by Trimper, the captain and the inspirational leader for the Springfield Indians. The club was down at this point. Trimper got them back going right here as he stuffs one past Sidorkovich as it banks off the post and goes in. The Indians took the lead. Well, then right back, Binghamton was able to tie the game again after it looked like the Indians had regained control of the game, but the Whalers struck and made it a 4-4 game. Well, can you top this? That's the way this game has been going back and forth. One club scores, the other club comes right back and gets another one. Binghamton gets a goal right here by Mike Hoffman as he's left all alone on the doorstep to knock one home for him, his sixth, from Ferraro and Bourbonnet, and the Whalers had knotted it up. John, with the goaltenders or whoever had uh, all kinds of fun tonight. I'm sure it's not fun if you talk to either one of them. The Indians came right back, though, and Alan Kerr, 10-15, is second of the night, 18th of the season. He's the leading goal scorer for the Tribe, and you can see why on this one. A lot of potential in this young man for Alan Kerr. There's no doubt about it. Here's Kerr all alone in the slot in close corners, stick handles to his forehand, puts it in past Sidorkovic. He's faced an onslaught of shots tonight from Springfield, the Tribe on top. And on that goal, you can see he didn't waste any time with that goal. Sometimes players will hesitate before shooting. He got that puck and immediately shot and got it behind Sidorkovic. And then the Indians' uh, lead was short-lived, though, as Dan Rubinet came back and uh, tied it up once again. Richie Dunn and Ray Ferraro set up this goal right here by Dan Bourbonnet. Really, Mir Miroslav Molly had a chance to knock him out of the play there. He had a couple of bangs at it. No fault of Lauren Mullican as he made the stop and was down and out. Bourbonnet gets the goal. Binghamton, we've said it before, back in the game. And the Indians score at 19.56. I originally had called it Lawton and putting a uh, puck in the net for the Springfield Indians. As Jenna mentioned, doing much of the work in there. I got so excited with the work that Lawton was doing. I Called the goal a lot, but it was Ron Handy that gave the Indians the lead. Well, it's easy to do. When a guy creates the play, sometimes you think he might have knocked it home because Brian Lawton really made this goal possible with great forechecking. Hamway sends it out to Handy. Handy gets his 10th at 1956, and the Indians are where we are right now on top 6-5 to five after 2. I hope you're enjoying the action here on the Springfield Community Network. And, John, our record on SCN this year, you figured it out finally. We can give the exact total. 6-1-1, one one, as I mentioned earlier, in SCN. Let's hope that record... Stays on the positive side here tonight. The score, the Indians leading here, 6-5 to five over the Binghamton Whalers. Dick Baker from the Springfield Newspapers will be our guest in a moment. Hope you're enjoying the action. 6-5 Indians, let's take a break. This week in hockey, the Springfield Indians take on the Nova Scotia Oilers Friday, December 21st. And Saturday, December 22nd, the Indians face off against the Fredericton Express in an always challenging AHL confrontation. Bring the entire family and join in on the action. Always free on street parking available this Friday and Saturday at the Springfield Civic Center. Back between periods here at the Springfield Civic Center, our score, the Springfield Indians 6 and the Binghamton Whalers 5. My guest is one of the best hockey writers, I'd have to say, in the area, Dick Baker, who writes for the Springfield newspapers, also covers the Southern Division for the Hockey News, one of the best top, top publications as far as the hockey world is concerned. Dick, thanks for coming on. The first question, let's, well, we don't have much time, so let's get right to the Southern Division of the American Hockey League, one of the most exciting divisions probably in the American Hockey League. Rochester, Rochester Americans off to an early start, very quick out of the gate, but now it's tightened up. Well, you know, I was talking to one of my uh, friend writers back in the NHL this week. And the joke in Rochester is, is they think they might be the first 11-0 team not to make the playoffs. <laughs> the team is really falling apart. They lost Shaq Cotier for the year, their, their number one goaltender. They lost their coach. They're losing players left and right and recalls to Buffalo. They lost all their confidence there. And even though they're drawing six to 7,000 people a game, uh, it hasn't been enough really hasn't. Of course, this Binghamton Whaler Club, we saw them early on in the year, looked to be one of the strongest clubs as far as I was concerned. I felt one of the strongest clubs in the American Hockey League. They've got some good chance, but the Indians are showing them they can play with them now, which wasn't the case early on. Well, I'll tell you, John, I, I think the difference is, is the Gardner. You know, I'm one of the biggest Paul Gardner fans around. 
And as we sit here, and I've said this many times, I don't understand what he's doing in this league. He can uh, play in the power play. He's not a bad penalty killer either. And uh, he's crafty around the net. And if you put him on uh, a line with uh, somebody who can shoot the puck, another guy who has a little bit of speed on the, on the left side, you know, he's dangerous. And uh, getting guys like Marty Howe and Richie Dunn, they've got a little bit of experience in the blue line. That's going to help them down the long haul, too. How's the David A. Jensen situation in Binghamton? Here's a big draft pick out of Lawrence Academy. And comes to Hartford with a lot of hope for him off a big year with the Olympic team. And it hasn't panned out for the young man. What's the, what's the story with him? I don't think he was ready to play in the National Hockey League. And I think you, you find the same thing, uh, nothing against Brian Lawton. He's certainly done a fine job since he's been here. But a lot of times, general managers and scouts will try to make themselves look good by assuring everybody in the world that these guys are ready to play in the National Hockey League. But it isn't necessarily so. You know, they need a year or two of grooming. We were talking the other day, and naturally you do need helmets in the game of hockey, but it's pretty hard to tell some of these guys, one from another. I'm sure in television, uh, uh, doing the games, you find the same thing happen sometimes, too. And a lot of these guys are, are 20, 21 years old. They're all young. They're all fast. They can all move. And some of their talents are not yet perfected. And sometimes you need a year or two to do that. And I think uh, that's the case with Jensen. Let's go to the Hershey Bear situation now here. Big news in the American Hockey League recently, later on this week, is that Gary Innes has been fired. And the, really, the Bears have been having some tough times. Uh, well, it's, it's funny, as I wrote in the, in the Hockey News, uh, excuse me, on the Hockey News, but for the Sunday Republican, uh, in yesterday's Republican, uh, and my story was basically that uh, a lot of people were complaining that the Indians uh, gave up on the Chicago-Philadelphia uh, deal, and they went to the Islanders and North Stars. You know, I get stopped every once in a while, you know, here at the rink about that, and I don't hear those people anymore, because when you look at the standings, uh, you'll find that... Hershey's in last place, Philadelphia Farm Team, and Milwaukee Admirals, the International Hockey League, uh, under Chicago's uh, guidance, is in last place, both of them with 6-15 and 15 records. I think, uh, in fairness to Innes, they don't have a very good defense. I think we saw that here. They had no centers. They knew that before the season started, and they didn't do very much to, to improve that situation. They played people out of position, like Al Hill at center. He's actually a winger, and I think they should go out and get somebody. Let's talk a little bit about the Springfield Indians now. Early on in the year, big news. The Indians, what's wrong? The club was really floundering, a young club. Do they have the talent to make it? Now we've seen a complete turnaround. In Dick Baker's eyes, what's the talent on this club? How do you assess it? And what do you foresee in the future? Well, uh, the Indians, I think, now have the, the number of players that they need, first of all. As Adirondack is finding out, as Rochester is finding out, you can't win these games with 13 or 14 scares. Secondly, I think that the Indians, more than any other team, were affected by having a lot of Central Hockey League players that were not used to the pace of the American Hockey League. The CHL is an easier league than the American League. The American League is a little bit more bump and grind, a little tighter defensive play. Some of the guys weren't ready for that. So I think that, plus the fact you have the natural time that it takes for two different organizations to blend together. Word of caution, though. Don't forget we're doing this with the Tom Hirsches, the Brian Martins, and people like that. And we're right now on the top of a cycle. The most players you can possibly have or need or want. But uh, that can change with a couple of injuries up top. And then what's going to be most important is if they continue this play once the Lawton and Hershey's and people like that return to, to Minnesota or Deneen to New York. Well, it's been great. We hope it, it goes on. Uh, thanks to you, Dick, for coming along. And we always a pleasure to talk with you. And we'll be seeing you around the rest of the year and look forward to hearing from you. Thank you very much, John. Dick Baker has been our guest. Look for his hockey notebook in the Sunday paper. It's always great for scoops and the latest in, in hockey action. If you pick up the hockey news, he covers the Southern Division for the hockey news. We'll be back with third period action right after these messages. TV22 and Consolidated Entertainment proudly present an evening with Bill Cosby. But you see, fathers are altogether different. I'm not saying they're better. I'm saying they're different. See, my father established our relationship when I was seven years old. He looked at me and said, you know, I brought you in this world. I'll take you out. Now, I am just sick and tired. And tired always followed sick. Worst beating I ever had in my life. My mother said, I am just sick. I said, and tired. Back one, Mike Derek with John Forson. We're just underway here in the third for Ed Miss, uh, an early couple of, one early shift, but the 6 5 Indians here in this third period as the puck is loose and Tom Hurst for the try.
right wing for Kerr. He tips it ahead, and then Kerr breaks back for the Indians. Here's Kerr into the Binghamton zone, but he's tied up, and the Whalers come out of there on left wing. The center ice and moving into Springfield zone, Francis Getty, but that's broken up by Trimper, who breaks back for the Indians. Here's Trimper for the Indians, closing in. Checked on the play, and then they dump it into the Whalers end of the ring. Binghamton trailing by a goal at 6-5. We're early on in this third period. As handy for the Indians goes back after it. He banks it on the boards, up the side for Hamway. He circles back in his own zone and breaks out of there for the Indians. Long slap shot, and that bounces off the backboards right to Nicholson. He couldn't get it out. He pulls it in, shoots, and the stop by Sidorkovich, and the rebound taken by Adams. Adams comes to center, long shot handled by Mulliken, and he leaves it for his own defense. The loose puck taken by Hamway. He's tied up. The Whalers, Adams after it, now takes control of the puck. Here's Adams, winds back behind the net. Here are the Whalers trying to stuff from in front, but Handy breaks it up and leads to center. Lawton in across the line, moves in. The pass to Hamway, centering it right through, and Handy falls into the goal crease, and Sidorkovic has lost his stick. Now Handy for the Indians, right in. Kicks at it, but falling down, and the Whalers are able to clear it outside the line. And I tell you, that was almost a dangerous situation for Handy. Now, the loose puck taken and Binghamton breaks back. Here's a clearing pass across the line, and Malekin the save on the Hoffman shot as he moved in. Now it's clear to Hoffman once again. Centers it in front to the left side, Brown shot. Great shot, stick save Malekin. And then Molly winds it, but not out. Held in by Kleinendorf. Deflected in front, they score! Binghamton has tied it up once again at six after the shot was taken at the point and deflected it home. And it's tied 6-6 six, six with 17.42 left. Well, the first five minutes of the period, very important. Here's Ray Ferrara with the deflection right here past Lauren Mulliken. I believe the original shot taken from the point. And I tell you, Ray Ferraro gets himself a goal. We talked about him around the net. Very good. He's got a couple assists to go along with this goal here, his 17th. And we're tied at 6, 17, 42 remaining in regulation. Now play as Brown Shuttle moves in. Shooting and Malikin the save. And then Deneen hands it along the near boards and clears one all the way down into the Binghamton end of the rink. Back to get it is the Whalers Kleinendorf who dumps it on his backhand on left wing. And the Whalers for Robert once again into the Springfield zone. Drop pass in front. Whalers try and clear it free for Dan Bourbonnet. They jam up behind the net. Ferrero centers in front. Mullican the save. Rebound. And Mullican holds on with another Binghamton scoring opportunity in front. And now we have some pushing and shoving in front of Mullican, but everybody separated. So the Whalers having the early opportunities here in this third period to take the lead. That's right, and I tell you, Lauren Mollican had to be the guy right there to make the stop. Let's take another look at this one right here. Mollican has to stay sharp, as you see Hoffman untouched in the crease right in the slot area. That's a little shot going. The skate of Mollican was right there to make the stop and then covered on the rebound as the Whalers were converging around the Springfield net. They're hungry, Mike. It looks like they have the upper hand here in the third period. New rude and obnoxious crew in front of us. That's right. Uh, uh, you know, we have offshoots of the rude and obnoxious crew, and now they're right below us. And very vocal. Play back behind the Whalers' net as the Indians try and center one, but the Binghamton Whalers come to center, and up to the center ice area is Francis Getty. His shot blocks the defense, and then it's clear to center. Indian six and the Whalers six, 16-46 left in the hockey game. As up to center ice comes Springfield State into the Whalers zone, shooting, and it's deflected over the glass and into the crowd. I spoke to Lauren Henning, and he was telling me that you know, with the shooters, guys like Hirsch and you know uh, uh, some of the other sharpshooters on the Springfield Indians, Emperor, Terry Tate has the hardest shot of anybody on the Springfield Indians hockey club when he can get it off. Well, being a forward, the opportunity to, to make use of that shot doesn't really present itself that much. You know, he usually has to rely on the wrist shot or, you know, a deflection here and there being a forward, but Terry Tate can fire the puck, and the Indians do have plenty of players who can uh, do that with the puck and like to use them in their arsenals. You take a look at a father and son combination out there, which calls to mind the trivia question of tonight, and we'll give you that answer coming up very shortly. Playing away in the Whalers 
break back at center. Here's a chance for Jim Magoo, but he's tied up, and Binghamton break free. Here's Avassin, right in, shoots, Mullick, and a glove save. And then Burns Smith takes Avassin into the corner. Back behind the net, Avassin, and Burns Smith right for it. The loose puck taken by Binghamton. They try and center one. Indian Burns Smith tries to clear out. Whalers holds it in. Back behind the goal, and trying to center one is the clear in front. They score! Binghamton scores to make it 7 6. Well, they fought from behind and fought from behind all night long, and on a weird deflection, Greg Adams will get the goal. There it is going off a prior. We went off a Lauren Mulliken. He could not find it. Greg Adams was the guy right there on the doorstop, just coming back to the Binghamton Whalers after being sent up to the Washington Capitals. Adams has come back. He gets the goal with 16 02 remaining in the third period, and the Whalers have finally. Taking the lead, it's 7-6 Binghamton as you look at it on your SCM screen. So a uh, goal for Adams, and we'll get the assist for you in just a moment. And if you can believe it, that's the first time the Whalers have had the lead in this entire hockey game as the Indian first is tied up. Clears on the boards, and then on the left wing, Jensen for a handy. He moves in, stops to make a play. Dipsy Doodles drops for Hirsch. Hirsch moving in, centering front deflection. Sidorkowicz to save, rebound. And then he covers up with some chances in front. Well, the Indians come right back there and carry the play to the Binghamton Whalers. Tom Hirsch with a shot from the point there, and it was deflected on the way through, and Sidorkovic finally call, uh, is there to cover up to make the stop. So the Indians trying to carry the play right back. 15.36 remaining here in the third period. We have our trivia question tonight. Is there a famous father on the ice tonight for the... One of the players on the ice tonight has a famous father. That's it. I finally got it out. And he was a former All-Star for the Springfield Indians. Can you name him? And we'll flash that answer for you as soon as we can right here on SCN as you take a look at Brian Lawton and Dave and Paul Gardner on the face. Here's first shooting, and it's deflected to the far side. Whalers Siltala trying to get it out of there. Now it's loose. They jam up, and then Lawton fights for it with Marty Howe. They all jam up after it, and we'll have a face-off in the... Binghamton zone. Avassin gets an assist on that at 3.58. And above, a couple of changes on the goals this evening. As uh, I guess we're waiting for the trivia, John. That's right. We got the trivia answer coming up right here, and I'll give it the old Shazam. And I hope it. Co there it is. I tell you, I'm unbelievable with this magic. Cal Gardner, father of Binghamton's Paul, was an All-Star center for Springfield, 1957-58. He was the third. Uh, leading score in the league that year, a club that went to the Calder Cup Finals only to lose to Hershey in that one. Now it's loose behind the net as the Indians in after it. Halson is checked. Loose puck taken by Henry. Henry on the board. Speeds for Deneen. To the left point for Vern Smith. Shooting deflected just wide. Now Deneen in after it. He clears it in front. Henry to Deneen. Deneen feeds at the side of the net for Halson. Centered for Coolis and it's deflected wide. Loose puck taken and Vance off should have been a penalty but Binghamton breaks back. And across the line comes Gardner. He moves around the defense, but the Indians break it up. Now Gardner centers right through the goal crease. Coolis after it, but Deneen has it and feeds up on left wing. Here's Deneen. Headman's for Coolis that hops over his stick. And the Whalers back after it, Graham Nicholson. Nicholson clears off the boards to center. And then Coolis has it. Coolis breaks into the Whalers zone. Stops to make a play. Tries to center for Housen. Holds on and drops for Vern Smith. Shooting! And it's deflected wide. Housen after it for the Indians. Stops to make a play. Winds for Vern Smith. And then Binghamton's Nicholson breaks it up and clears to center. And it's tipped to the Indians line. Trimper breaks back. He moves in. Shoot! And it's blocked to the defense. Trimper after once again. Bumps off the way there's Nicholson. Moves into the corner area. Centers for a prior weak shot. And blocks the defense. And the Whalers are able to clear it into the Springfield zone. Some great scoring chances for the try. Great work by Tim Trimper playing an outstanding game tonight as he set up Chris Pryor. Sidorkovich was there to make the stop. And you know, Mike, getting back to that trivia answer, Cal Gardner, NHL great. And a name to be remembered as we have a little bit of a brick developing along the ice there. You should take a look at it right now on your screen. Players milling around and exchanging words. Greg Adams is there for Binghamton along with Roger Cortco and Chris Pryor. And Adams really are the main combatants in this one. But getting back to the Gardner situation, Paul Gardner, himself a former Indian, played for the Tribe in 1980-81 in 14 games, had nine goals, 12 assists, 21 points, and then was sent off to New Brunswick and Toronto in that year. And is 
another brother there, brother Paul, Dave Gardner, played for the Springfield Indians in the late 70s. So the Gardner's a name in Springfield history as far as that's concerned. And the fans, I'm sure, remember last year when Gardner stunned the Tribe in the playoffs for the Baltimore Skipjacks, a big factor in the Skipjacks' four-game sweep of the Indians in the AHL playoffs. Face off in the circle to the left of Mullican in this 7-6 game with the Whalers on top. Here is Jensen for the Indians, jammed up. They fight for it behind the net. They all jam up and finally freeze it there. And when we saw all of that pushing and shoving, it reminds me of that big fight the other night. They needed a dog by the name of Curly, a big German shepherd. And that bench-clearing brawl, Bill McCreary, the referee, had to come out in, in street clothes, took out a pen and a notebook to get all the penalties for that bench-clearing brawl. But it was big Curly, the German shepherd, that settled things down. Yeah, and I was talking with Roger Neal, the broadcaster for Vinicius, and he was saying that McCreary was getting changed. Had his shirt off, had to throw the sport jacket on over a bare chest, came flying out of the ice, and they brought Dog with Curly out of the stands, uh, who's become a hero now in Binghamton, and I'm sure it's going to be a, a main thing. They might make a monument to him and put him there in the middle of the city in Binghamton. I don't know if that's going to happen, but... You know, we know uh, if there's ever trouble, Curly will come and save things. Here's play in the center ice area. Indians back at their own line, and Pryor drops it back for Jensen. There's Jensen. Lead pass for Tripper, but it hops over his stick, and it's cleared back. The Indians' Kerr breaks in. Stops to make a play, holds on to that puck, but then tipped away at the Whaler line, and the Indians have to go back. Then the glove of Kerr flies into the air. He has to retrieve it as the Indians clear it back in. Here's Ulf Samuelson, the youngster from Sweden, out of his own zone. Across the center and slaps it in. Malikin deflects it aside. Here's Hirsch behind his own net. Takes over for the Indians and breaks out of there. He loses control. Whalers try and center one, but it's deflected under the far side and the Indians take over. Here's Terry Tate, jumps one into the Binghamton zone. Whalers back after it, ground shuttle. He's tied up now. Binghamton trying to clear out Indians for check. Here's Tate behind the net, tries to center one. Adams the loose puck and he backhands or rather flips one to center where Deneen takes over. Now Binghamton breaks back into the Springfield zone. Mike, there's 11.46 remaining in the hockey game. The Indians cannot wait too long to start making their moves. They're going to have to take taking, taking some gambles, pitching in a little bit more when Binghamton has it in their own end and forechecking because that way they can create their own breaks and get something out of it. I tell you, they're going to have to start taking it to Binghamton. Binghamton, of course, doing a good job of checking through the neutral zone. Springfield's got to get the upper hand back here, trailing by one with 11.46 remaining. You can see tonight why Binghamton's have lost only once in their last 10 games. They've been battling the whole way and never giving up. Here's Howell moving in for the Whalers. Tries to center one, deflected right through the crease, and Housen has it for the Indians. Here's Scott Housen for the Indians. Dumps one in. Indians, Housen in after, but the Whalers tip it away. Now Coolis winds back behind the net, but the Whalers take over, and Francis Getty is able to clear one to center after taking a hit from the Indians' Dale Henry. Now the Indians having trouble getting it out of there. Here's Vern Smith back for Pryor. Pryor winds it on the boards on left wing for Coolis. Here's Coolis for Springfield. Headman for Henry. It's deflected into the Whaler zone, and Sidorkovich leaves it there. Way out of the net to dump the three, but Coolis the loose puck. Coolis winds free. Tries to get it for Housen, but Binghamton able to clear the zone. Now, the Whalers move in, and it's offside. And something I've been noticing here, and I don't know if you are as well, Indians very tired. Look to me here in the third grade after this their uh, ninth period of hockey in the last three nights. And, you know, it sometimes seems to me that it's a little bit tiring for the squad here tonight. What do you think? Well, as you take a look at some of the crowd here, that could be the case. I know Lauren Henning was worried about it before the start of the game. It's a big trip, St. Catharines, Rochester, and then back to Springfield. It's a long haul getting in the wee hours in the morning and then having to play tonight, I tell you, against a good club like Binghamton. It's a tough task. Binghamton doing an awful lot of force checking as well. It's hurting the Indians. Now on right wing, the Indians' Hamway tries to feed it for Lawton. Now Lawton behind the net, taken out of the play. Whalers couldn't get it out, and Jensen holds it in. Jensen then finally loses control of the puck, and the Whalers break back. Here's Ulf Samuelson. Rink wide for Adams. He's tied up. Loose in the center ice area, and the Indians take over. Here's Hirsch for the Tribe. Crosses the center line and backhands one in uh, across for Handy. It hops over his stick. Whalers to Dorkovich out of the net to clear it away. Hand, first centers, and Lawton keeps over the net. 
as he had a great scoring chance to Kerr set him up. And then the Whalers clear to center. Here are the Indians prior at his own line. Drops back for his own defense here in this 7-6 game with the Whalers leading. 9.46 left in the hockey game. Here's Gord Denise, up to Porto. He speeds across for Tripper into the Whaler zone. Tripper stops, tries to center one, and he's ridden off the puck. Whalers try and get it out of there and do succeed. And here they come to center. Bourbonnet into the Springfield zone, but Pryor breaks it up. And then in the neutral zone, Binghamton clears to the Indians line. Indians, Kerr at center. Into the Binghamton zone, backhands one in, but Brown Shadow breaks it up. Porto jamming it free. And then Kleinendorf stands it for Binghamton and shoots the center. A couple of great chances there, Mike. Ryan Lawton only to be thwarted by Sidorkovic. He's played a little bit better here as the game is worn out. Springfield with some chance. Now for Binghamton out of his own zone, skates to center. Now moves in across the line, dumping it free. Quick centering pass, score! Well, the Whalers lead it 8-6, to six, and they're hugging the player on the far side that put it in, and I'm not exactly sure as there was some scrambling in front, and with 6, or actually 8.48 left, it's 8-6 Whalers. There's the rookie getting the goal into the top corner with 8.48 remaining in regulation. Could be the backbreaker for the Springfield Indians trying to fight back trying to dig down for something more. It's been hard finding it. They seem to be tiring a little bit, now find themselves down by two. Now, it's loose as Franceschetti has it. Franceschetti for Binghamton comes to center. He's tied up, and Bodak breaks back. Bodak and across the line. Tries to center for Housen, goes into the corner. Here's big Bob Bodak tied up. Whalers lose control as Housen has it for the Indians. Housen for the player Smith shooting, and the stop by Sidorkovic. Now Bordak after a centering one, but Tate couldn't get his stick on it, and the Whalers Siltola able to get it, but not out. Smith holds it in, behind the net for Bordak. Bordak centers for Smith, but it's tipped away at the last moment, and the Whalers control the play on left wing. And clear to center, and Gardner has it for Binghamton. Across the line for Siltola, right in our goal. Shoot, score! Fourth goal of the night for Mike Siltola. And I tell you, now you have to say that this, the Binghamton Whalers are in the driver's seat. Another breakdown at the defense. Siltola went in untouched. Had Malikin dead to rights. Beaks him right there. And with 7.53 remaining, a tough hill to climb now for the Springfield Indians. They trail it by three. It's 9-6. Binghamton. Well, it's tough for the Indians here to battle back. It's been a four-goal third period explosion for the Whalers. And now the Indians back after it, and in their own zone, clear to center, and Lawton into the Whalers' zone. Lawton feeds it through, and it's offside. So, at set with 7.42 left, Whalers lead it 9-6, to six, and it's going to be an uphill battle for the Springfield Indians. The player Siltula, by the way, the second player in the American Hockey League this year to score four goals. Dennis Kalanich also scored four in a game earlier this year when he scored four with the Adirondack Red Wings and an 8-3 win over Springfield. So, tough night for the try. Now, Deneen has it on left wing. Feeds it through as they dump to the Whaler line, and Binghamton breaks back. They clear to the center ice area and all the way into the Indian zone, and Deneen back after it. 9-6 Binghamton, 7-20 left in the game as the Indians clear to center. Here's Handy losing control, and Binghamton breaks back. Magoo into the Springfield zone, tied up, and then... Lawton has it for Springfield. Winds back behind the net. Indians in their own zone. Break out of there. Deneen up the middle for Lawton. Clears for Handy. Handy is tied up with the Whaler defense. The Indians unable to hold it in, and Jensen has to go back. Now Lawton for the try. As the Indians need a quick one here. Moving in. Shooting, and that goes what Henry the rebound, Sidorkovich to save. And Brown Shadow covers up for Binghamton. Then it's cleared in. The Whalers in after it. Dan Bourbonnet tied up with the Indians player, and then Henry has it for the tribe. He jams up, and then Henry has it behind his own net. 
These for Vern Smith. He comes to center. Slap shot, high and wide. And after it for the Whalers is Brown Shuttle to clear it away. And then he's able to clear it down the ice and all the way into the Indian zone. Binghamton doing an excellent job of clearing it out. Well, they're skating very well Mike, here in the third period. You know, it's a 60-minute game. Springfield Indians with two great periods and then sort of a collapse here in the third period. Binghamton continues to skate well. Here's a little flip pass into the Springfield zone. And Pryor has it for Springfield. For Vern Smith, he spins to get away from a couple of whalers and moves out of his own zone. Up the middle for Henry. He's tied up, and then Vern Smith breaks free into the Whaler zone, but tied up, and Binghamton in their own zone takes over and clear to the Indian line. Now Tate breaks back for Springfield. He moves in. Terry Tate dropping it through for Coolis. Hesitates, and then his shot is blocked at the defense, and the Whalers' Francis Getty has it on left wing. Indians break back. Tate for Kerr. Kerr trying to shovel it through, but Siltala who scored four tonight, able to bank it off the boards to center. An excellent job by the Whalers to clear it out. That's right, Mike. You know, the last time in when the 10-1 game here on November the 2nd, the Whalers played 60 minutes of solid hockey. They've done the same thing here tonight. They started slow, but I tell you, they continue to skate well. Now, Bodak for the Indians tied up. They fight for it on the boards. Kerr trying to center one. They all jam up and hold it there. Now, time, a big factor, even with the Indians down by three, with Eight minutes left, it's much easier to score three, and with five minutes left, now time's gonna be the big factor. Certainly is, and you know with only five minutes left, I'd have to say the Indians need a goal in a hurry, and I mean quick. If they can get a goal off of this face-off, it'll be a step in the right direction. You know, once you start getting within the three-minute mark, three goals down, tough way to come back. You know, the Springfield Indians right now, as you take a look on your screen, the Whalers with that 9-6 advantage, Indians need a goal, and it's got to come now. Now here's Deneen has it. Centered for Kerr, backhander, and it's just deflected wide. Bodak has it on the boards. He and Kerr fight for it, but the Whalers take over. Now it's fought for and then cleared outside the line. This point of the game, Binghamton just dumping and clearing outside the line. That's all they have to do as Kerr speeds in for Tate. Tate tied up at the line, and then Binghamton Everson clears the center, and the Whalers moving across the line. Magoo, and boy, he can see it. He's tied up, and then Deneen has it for the try. He clears the center, and Dunn breaks it up and shoots it right back, and the Whalers keep coming and coming. Here's the Indian Deneen on the board's check. Whalers try and clear it for Ferraro, or actually Adams behind the net. They all fight for it and hold it there with 4.15 remaining. Well, Lou Francis Kedios also had a big night. We were talking about Siltala. Francis Getty, as far as my count goes, has four assists tonight as well. That entire line, Mike, of Gardner, Francis Getty, and Siltala has been phenomenal out there tonight. Figured in virtually all the scoring here, along with Ray Ferraro's line out there with Hoffman. Those two have been a great combination. And there's the sign, the faithful here, harpoon the Whalers. That hasn't been the case. It looked like it earlier. The Whalers have scalped the tribe. I've always uh, seen those uh, little pieces of info in the paper, scalp the tribe. That might be the, tomorrow's headline unless the Indians can get it going with four minutes left. Here's Watton at center. He's tied up, then moves into the Whalers' zone. Stops to make a play. Feeds for Hamway. Hamway holds on. Taken out of the play by Hoffman. And then the Indians go into forecheck. The Indians going to have to forecheck uh, as much as they can at this point. But Binghamton, clear one all the way into the Springfield zone. After it for the Indians, as Hirsch and Icing is called. Well, uh, the one Mollikin here this evening, the victim of nine goals. He's only played, though, one game that December 2nd in the last 12. So he hasn't had a lot of work. And here this evening, uh, uh, maybe it shows a little bit that he hasn't seen that much game action. Well, it's tough, you know, for the fans to, to not to realize that Warren Mollikin is in a tough situation, not playing and then being thrown to the, the dog, so to speak, against a tough Binghamton club. Tough situation when you don't see the action. Tough to stay sharp. He hasn't had that much help. There's been a lot of breakdowns defensively for Springfield tonight. So overall, it's been tough for Lawrence. Here's Lawton tries to center one. Indians handy. Moves in. Centering once again, but an extra pass is broken up by Binghamton. And they clear to center on left wing. Here's Francis Getty. Slap shot. And that's deflected off the side of the net. Here is Deneen up the middle. Check there. Whalers move in. And a shot by Gardner is deflected over the glass and into the crowd. I'm going to throw this at you again, as I've done every week on these SCN broadcasts. Three stars tonight in John Forsen. 
wise and knowledgeable opinion. Well, I don't know about wise and I don't know about knowledgeable, but I'll take a stab in the dark. Why don't you ask those two guys, Mike? They look like they could figure it out. But then once again, you come to me. Got to pick out three stars. I think Tim Trippers played a great game for Springfield tonight. For Binghamton, you have to say Mike so Sokola has been great. Francis Getty has been great. And Ferraro. There's four stars. Once again, I give the four and four. You four stars. Yeah, I'm that's trying, right. I'm the four and four. We're going to have to start trying calling. to set a trend. Well, it's easier that way, too. Here <laughs> comes the center and the Whalers. Here, leading by three. Give for Dunn. Dunn back in his own defense. Up the middle. And here comes Binghamton. Across the line is Magoo. Magoo couldn't control the pass. It's into the corner with 240 left in the game. As Pryor is tied up, he winds on the boards. Whalers pinch in. After it, Wolf Samuelson has it at the left point now. And then gets for Adams. That shot is deflected wide. Loose in the near side. Whalers couldn't center one, but then the Indians have it. And Kerr. Kerr moves into the Binghamton zone. Stops to make a play. Lead for Kortko, but it hops over his stick, and the passes are... Failing the click at this point, as Avastin has it for Binghamton. Clearing it through, but the Indians, Hirsch is there and drops it back for his own defense, which is 2.08 remaining. Fans here heading off as Housen speeds in. Right in on goal, backhander off the side of the net. Now he tries to center one, but Cronshadow breaks it up on the boards. Indians unable to hold it in, and Vern Smith has to go back. Now Smith into the Binghamton zone. Stops to make a play, and it's offside. It with a minute 50 left. And a record on SCN might go down to our second loss of the year. Well, and it's the Binghamton franchise that's doing it to us and the last time. And the record will fall probably to 6-2-1 thanks to the Binghamton Whalers. Well, we but can say against every team with Binghamton, we're undefeated. So you, can, you can say that. Well, playing away in Hirsch as, uh, with a minute 40 left. Uh, Clears one in, and then Brown shot, or rather Bourbonnet a shot. Mollikin the save, and Bourbonnet let it go, and Mollikin uh, deflected it away with a minute 35 remaining. The crowd much quieter tonight than we've seen the last three or four weeks on SCN. That's right. Many of them heading for the exits right now. A couple of the John, you get a fan there. Well, that's one, so we'll mark that down because they're few and far between. But as you see, some of them heading for the exits, Mike, but the Springfield Indians. Are Looking back on this on Monday night, three big games in the Southern Division. St. Catharines, St. Rockets, both on the road, picking up victories there. Two big pluses, a tired club out here tonight. Binghamton's a really a fantastic club, so I tell you, overall, the Springfield Indian club still going to be heard from in the Southern Division. A minute and a half left as the Indians' Vern Smith controls. Feeds it for Coolis. Coolis tied up. Now they jam after Coolis behind the net. Price to center one for Housen. Here's Housen for the Indians. Moving in front. Stops, moves right in, gets for Hirsch. Hirsch stops to make a play. Centers in front for Housen, but he ties it up. Now it's center for Henry, but again broken up with the Whaler defense and then cleared to center for Bourbonnet has it. Bourbonnet just dumps it into the corner. Whaler is after it. Hoffman, he tries to center one. Tied up at the Indians' defense. Jammed up along the near boards. Binghamton and the Indians fight for it along the near boards. They all jam up and then quickly flip one into the corner. Hoffman. And Hirsch back to get it with 43 seconds left. Binghamton leading 9 to 6. And Vern Smith for the Indians. Across the center and then just dumps it free on the boards. Indians' corner is tied up. And then the Whalers have to clear it. And then the Indians shoot it right back with 30 seconds left. Indians going to suffer the defeat. Now with 20 seconds left. Siltala drops it back for his own defense. And Graham Nicholson has it up the middle for Gardner. Gardner is tied up, and then the Indians clear it away on right wing for Bob Bodak. He's checked, and then Tate has it for Springfield with six seconds to go. He blasts one, and Sidorkovich to save. Three seconds left. Whaler is jumping to three, and the game is over. And the Springfield Indians are defeated on home ice tonight against the Binghamton Whalers in a game that was decided in period number three. You said it, Mike. You know, the Springfield Indians tried tonight, just didn't have enough. Two great periods. The first and second came out of the gate really flying, and then Binghamton fought their way back into the game. The Indians and the Whalers seesawed back and forth, but it was a solid third period from that group you're seeing right now on your screen. The Binghamton Whalers, they did the job. They're in first place in the Southern Division, and they showed us why here tonight. Final score, the Binghamton Whalers 9 and the Springfield Indians 6. That's the final, John, and we'll be back with our post-game activities after this.
This week in hockey, the Springfield Indians take on the Nova Scotia Oilers Friday, December 21st. And Saturday, December 22nd, the Indians face off against the Fredericton Express in an always challenging AHL confrontation. Bring the entire family and join in on the action. Always free on street parking available this Friday and Saturday at the Springfield Civic Center. Welcome back, everyone. Mike Barrick with John Forslund. Not happy news tonight from the Springfield Civic Center. The Indians on the short end of a 9-6 score. Not only did the Indians lose tonight, but their six-game winning streak overall. Their seven-game home unbeaten streak, where they have won seven straight on home ice. And their ten victories in the last 12 games. That goes down a little bit, and also our record on SCN. So a lot of the big play for the Springfield Indians hurts tonight. A lot of records go by the wayside tonight, but they have to sometimes the Indians have to regroup from this. They've got an outstanding team, Mike, and they've been playing some great hockey. And, you know, coming off a tough stretch of three straight games in three days against some tough opponents, the Spigginson Whaler team is a team that's got to be reckoned with. Probably one of the best in the American Hockey League. The Indians are right up there with them. No doubt in my mind that the Indians can regroup and come back from this. Yeah, fans sometimes will see a game like this in 9-6, but uh, the Whalers were a rested hockey team. They came ready and waiting for the Springfield Indians. They were here ahead of the Springfield Indians, so they had some chance to practice and uh, get ready for the Tribe, and tonight it really showed in the 9-6 victory. But the Indians playing very well, picking up four of six points in the last three games. We hate to make excuses, but of course, as you mentioned, Mike, the fact that the Whalers were rested, they come in a day early, the Indians coming in the wee hours. They're all variables that go into what makes up the hockey game, and of course, that was the case tonight. The Indians coming out on the short cut. Great hockey. And I tell you, the Indians will come out of this. Uh, I'll go out with them and say that. Well, John, um, I think you're going to be right. I have to go along with you. We're going to take a look at the winning goal this evening as well as Mike Sotola's fourth goal of the night. Four goals here, the second time an American Hockey League player has netted four this year. And ironically enough, both against the Springfield Indians. We'll take a look at the winning goal by Adams coming right up. Well, here's the winner, the one that proved to be a winner in this shootout here at the Springfield Civic Center. Has the pucks to flex off number 18, Chris Pryor, right there. Lauren Mullican makes the first stop and couldn't find the puck, and Adams was right there, and of course, he just came to Binghamton today after being up with the Washington Capitals of the National Hockey League. He got the game winner in this one, and it, what it was was an outstanding third period from the Binghamton Whalers. To their credit, they did an outstanding job. Now the Indians' record drops back to the 500 mark. Indians 14, 14, and 3. While the Whalers win it, they're now 18, 9, and 3. They're now uh, in first place all alone in the American Hockey League Southern Division, and have now gone 9 are actually 10, 1, and 1 in their last 12 games. That's right. The Springfield Indians, of course, have been playing great of late. And tonight coming out like this, it's going to be hard for them to regroup. But the, they will do it. And then they'll come out next week with a couple of big games against Nova Scotia and Fredericton. And, of course, for the Whalers, that line of Francis Getty, Gardner, and Sokolow all night long. Very hot. And Sokolow, as you mentioned, four goals. We're going to take a look at Sokolow's fourth goal of the night. Uh, Coming right up on your screen, as we'll see, Mike Siltala, the big story tonight for the Whalers. Well, another break down the Springfield end, and Siltala's right there, and really puts a beautiful move on Lauren Mollick, and he had him dead to the rights, and for Siltala, his fourth of the night, ninth of the year, and those two guys were quite frequent on the scoring sheet tonight. Francis Getty and Gardner pick up the assist. Well, John, next week, the Indians have a pair of games, including Nova Scotia and Fredericton. Our good friend Archie Henderson will be in town for Nova Scotia and then Fredericton in town as well. So a couple of key games next week for the Springfield Indians. That's right. Former Indian coach Larry Kish will lead the Nova Scotia Oilers into town along with, as you mentioned, a good buddy of yours, Archie Henderson. And the Oilers are a tough club and they'll be in here on Friday night. And on Saturday night, the Fredericton Express make their first appearance on Civic Center Ice. And the Express in first place in the Northern Division, one of the top clubs. The American Hockey League goes unnoticed due to the fact that they play up there in the Great White North. We don't hear much about them, but they have a top club with a lot of great talent. So a couple of big games coming up next weekend at the Civic Center. We hope you enjoy the action this evening. I know the score wasn't probably what you would have liked, but the Indians and the Binghamton Whalers in a shootout this evening, 15 goals. Binghamton wins it 9-6. to six. For John Forson, I'm Mike Burek saying I hope you enjoyed the broadcast tonight. We'll be with you next Monday night for another edition of Springfield Indians Hockey.